look forward to your reports throughout the afternoon from the sidelines here at Wallace Wade Stadium, 65 degrees, expecting rain throughout the day. Georgia Tech won the toss, selected to defer, and we're ready to go for ACC football on a Saturday afternoon in Durham, North Carolina. Georgia Tech with a two and three record to start the day. Duke is three and two and coming off the loss for the victory bell at North Carolina last Saturday, 38-7. Well, James told you about Georgia Tech and its loss at home against Pitt, 52-21. No return of the opening kickoff, and we'll see that Blue Devil offense. Gunner Holmberg can tuck it and go. Not just Mateo Durant, who Abby told you about there off the top, but Holmberg likes to run the football as well, trying to work on on leading some of these receivers, get some more explosive plays out of these receivers. They've got some guys like Jalen Calhoun that can take it the distance. We want to spread it around a little bit today. Blue Devils go right to the ground with Mateo Durant, the senior from Plum Branch, South Carolina. And he got four on the carry right to Quez Jackson for the play for Georgia Tech. Yeah, you know how they shut down the town in those small towns on Friday nights and, and go watch the high school game? I bet you they're all watching right now, Mateo Durant. Small town near the Georgia border down in South Carolina. Durant ran for 114 yards on 19 carries last week at North Carolina. That's a minimal gain to the 30-yard line, third and five. And Ely on the tackle for Georgia Tech. Jeff Ferris, the offensive coordinator, with this quick, quick tempo. Trying to get about 80 snaps a game. They had 77 last week in the loss to UNC. Holmberg. Takes on the contact, it comes up short. Got three on the rush, Charlie Thomas on the tackle. Duke have been solid, James, in third down conversions. 49%, fourth in the ACC, but it looks like they're punting here in their first possession. Well, and it looks like Coach Cutcliffe isn't getting what he wished for on series number one. He talked a lot in our meetings yesterday about first downs, first downs, first downs. We have got to get these first downs. It, as you march down the field, you get that first first down, the other ones become easier. But a good stand by the Georgia Tech D. Kyrick McGowan is the return man, watches it bounce inside the 20 at about the 18 or 19 yard line. So that punt by Porter Wilson takes it inside the 20. And Georgia Tech with its first opportunity. And Jeff Sims, starting quarterback, Entered the game at North Carolina late in the first half and had 128 yards rushing a career high and three rushing TDs in that victory that we highlighted against the Tar Heels earlier this season for Georgia Tech. Try to take it up the middle to the 20. It's a couple of yards on the rush. Gibbs on the carry. Good job by the big bodies up front. Where you see Fry, Big Ben Fry, the outstanding wrestler in high school, continues to wrestle here in college for the Duke Blue Devils wrestling team. And they're going to have to shut down Gibbs running the football all day long. They swing it out to the left in Gibbs. And receiving was what he did, James, in that game against Pitt. Six catches for 125 yards, the most by a Georgia Tech running back since 1970 in the losing effort against the Panthers. You're absolutely right, and it was interesting because Pitt decided that Georgia Tech was not going to run the football against them. So what did Dave Patno do, the offensive coordinator? He threw it to him. He had a 64-yard touchdown that was called back. Here's a big third down. Let's see if the Duke D can answer. Georgia Tech 13th in the conference on third down, but a wide open man is Gibbs down the sideline for Georgia Tech, and he is going to the end zone. The third down play goes all the way to the house for the Yellow Jackets and 77 yards. No flags on this one. I just mentioned he had the 64-yard touchdown reception. Called back. It was a holding call on a receiver right in front of the Georgia Tech bench here. Bench here. They just slip him out of the backfield. And obviously a busted coverage leaving him all alone. That is the number one guy on the field. If you're a Duke Blue Devil on defense, you got to know where he is. He wears number one for a reason. First touchdown of the day. 
And the first touchdown receiving on the season for Gibbs goes 77 yards. The Yellow Jackets and Coach Collins, 7 0. In America, the future belongs to everyone. Product not yet. TV stream. Get your TV together. The longest scoring play this season for Georgia Tech gives them a 7-0 lead, and the Duke fans a little bit stunned in the raindrops here in Durham, James. Yeah, you see the little bunch up at the top of your screen even after the motion. You've got three bodies over there defensively, and nobody watching Jameer Gibbs slip out of the backfield. And you better believe that that's one thing they worked on all week long in practice is Jameer Gibbs not just stopping him inside that they did a pretty good job on first down of stuffing the run but getting creative Dave Patno the offensive coordinator for Georgia Tech being creative in ways to get the ball to number one he's an outstanding playmaker and showing you right there from the giddy up and putting Georgia Tech on top by seven Longest career catch for Gibbs, longest pass for Sims, and it's 7-0. Georgia Tech scoring on its first possession. That was a third down play, and they have not been strong this year on third down. The longest for Gibbs and the longest uh, for uh, Sims as well, but also the easiest probably for both of them. I mean, it doesn't get much easier than that. Although a lot of receivers will tell you that, that those seem to be the easiest, or the hardest rather, when you're out there all alone and 110% you should catch it, but catching it in stride, Jameer Gibbs. Let's see what these Blue Devils can do now, their chance. Try the left side with Durant. Breaks a couple of tackles out near the 35-yard line, and that's first down yardage. Mateo Durant got 11. There is a player injured behind the play from Georgia Tech. Big 71, Maurice McIntyre does a fantastic job. The defender got up there and set that edge, but he blew him out of there, and we've got a bad injury here. We'll check on it when we come back to Durham. Every road has its Are the Ravens ready to keep rolling as Lamar continues to soar? Thomas family knew that. That's he, right. He, he was smiling and ran off and it seemed to be okay. Not only uh, lower body, upper body as well. So hopefully it's just uh, maybe got the wind knocked out of him. There he was uh, missing the tackle there and, and diving. But yeah, it, it, it looked ugly at first and there when we came back from break. But, um, but we did see a, a smiling look to pop over there okay. Hopefully he'll be all right back in the football game for Andrew Thacker in this defense because they need big number one. So Durant just ran it for 11 yards and a first down for Duke from its own 36-yard line. Gunnar Holmberg, the quarterback, he hands off to the capable hands of number 21. Goes down the sideline. There is a flag out behind the play at the 35-yard line. Yeah, this is going to be a hold, and a hold that helped him get to the edge there. Holding number 88, offense, 10-yard penalty, still first down. James, that's Jeff Flanagan, our referee this afternoon. That flag's on Jake Marweedy. There you see the, the tight end lined up there in that wing position. And he's locked down on the defender and right there in front of the official. So they'll back it up the other way. That negates a run of 14 yards by Mateo Durant. Holmberg, design run. And he got squared up at the 30-yard line short of it. As Holmberg took it ahead for three yards. Ely again on the stop for Georgia Tech. Ace. They're high on ace. That linebacker transfer from Maryland, the captain of this defense. Second down. Holmberg had a little trouble with it. Then he threw it to Calhoun, who goes nowhere. Fenced in by the Georgia Tech Yellow Jacket defense. Ely again first on the scene. Allende Ely, and as James said, they call him ace, and there's no game, James. Yeah, he's, everybody on the team calls him ace. We're allowed to call him ace, but he writes down Allende because that's what Mama likes to see. But son's playing some pretty good ball. We've got another Georgia Tech player down on the turf right here. Seven to nothing, the Jackets on top. Before we talk about tax smart a conference with some of the most storied programs in college football. Picking up on the previous play. And on that 
Georgia Tech sideline able to walk off the field under his own strength. Now time for the Ford keys to the game with James Bates. Yeah, it looks like uh, Charlie Thomas could have used the cup, not a Waffle House cup, though. <laughs> All right, Georgia Tech for Jeff Collins. Consistency. We talked about it off the top. They have got to be more consistent. Play to play, game to game. That's one thing they're striving for as he tries to build this program. He's got some players in there. Those players got to make those plays consistently. For Duke, straight up finish. They have not been finishing this season, especially last week in the 28-7, or 38-7 rather, lost to North Carolina. In that second half, they held North Carolina defensively to nine yards of total offense, but then offensively, they turned around and had negative yardage in the fourth quarter in a the game they're trying to come back against their rivals. So finish has been a word that David Cutcliffe has been barking quite a bit throughout the last week or so. Yeah, Duke allowed 456 total yards to North Carolina last week, and that stopped a three-game winning streak for the Blue Devils, and all of those wins had come at home. Back on their home turf, and Holmberg makes a move at the 35 up near the 40-yard line, but short of the marker, which was up at the 46. Ten yards on the run. Ely has the tackle, and we called his name several times, and that brings up fourth down for the Duke offense. Yeah, Tom, a couple of those times we've called him with the tackle on Gunnar Holmberg, and, and both of those times have been quite a lick. Oh, had an official do a somersault to pop right back up on his feet. That was athletic. Wilson back to punt. Ray is the deep man. Wants the fair catch. He'll make it successfully at about the 23-yard line. 38 yards on the punt for the Blue Devils and Porter Wilson. So Georgia Tech, after that 77-yard pass play on their first possession, Jeff Sims leads them back out onto the field. For Sims, that was his fourth passing touchdown of the season. Jordan Yates has also seen significant action at the quarterback position for Georgia Tech, and he's thrown five TD passes, so a capable backup for Sims as well. Sims out of the pocket. To the 30, diving forward. And up to about the 31-yard line for Sims and an eight-yard run. Jeremiah Lewis on the tackle for Duke. Jameer Gibbs doing a good job down the field after he turns in his route to create a little bit of distraction and getting in the way of the defender to help get a couple extra yards. That's a nice pickup. Second down and two. Play with that all day as an offensive coordinator. Going to run it with Gibbs. Breaks through the line. Tumbles his way down to the 44-yard line. And 11 yards. Nate Thompson had to make the stop. Jameer Gibbs on the carry, the freshman. Well, watch Fry, the defensive end here. He separates, does a good job with his hands, but he's got to flatten. Remember, this is this is a special athlete here in Jameer Gibbs, the freshman, carrying the football. You change his angles, he'll mess you up on it. So Sims takes it down to the 45-yard line. That's a first down. 11 yards on the run by Sims. Leonard Johnson on the tackle. No, he, Man, that is such a great design, James, right? Well, it's and, it's, and it sets nicely into the skill set of Jeff Sims. He, he's reading, running, and he's reading when he's throwing the football and not missing his reads either. Dave Patno was complimenting him last week. Even in that loss, he threw for 359 passing yards, and his offensive coordinator said he only missed one read the entire day. So just really happy where he is playing his best football right now, trying to turn them all into wins and get some good energy going. Sims threw it 33 times, James. Completed 24 of those for 359, as you said. All of those numbers, career highs for the quarterback, Sims. That's Dante Smith getting his chance, but not a lot there. Two yards and Ben Fry on the stop for Duke. Graduate student from Dublin, Ohio. And here we go with third and long for Georgia Tech. And we know what they did on that last third down. Oh. Wide open man as Gibbs went all the way to the house in 77 yards. Sims escapes pressure. Throws on the run and it's complete. Inside the 20. Fighting down to the five is Carter. 
And he's down close to the one yard line. Now the officials have two different spots. So let's see where they put this football. Offside defense. That penalty did decline. The play results in a first down. And 40 yards on the play, and they will mark him just outside the one-yard line. Yeah, I think it was over right here, a little bit too quick off the spot. And then look at Jeff Sims looking downfield and giving guys like Malachi Carter just a few extra beats. It's it's next to impossible to cover some of these guys like Malachi Carter, like McGowan, like like a Nate McCullum. If if they're not open and that rush can't get to him, you got a quarterback that can step out of that pocket and buy some time. How are you supposed to hang with these speedsters running all across the field and an excellent job of keeping cool Jeff Sims finding his guy and how about Malachi Carter just churning his way to get it down there near the end zone. I thought he was going to put it in the paint. Carter had six catches for 73 yards a week ago against Pitt. Now first and goal. They'll go to Mason. Puts the head down, tries to burrow his way, but doesn't get much. Maybe one. If any. Good job defensively just winning those battles. Gary Smith and company just firing off and standing those Georgia Tech offensive linemen up. Gary Smith, Wayne Carter, Ben Fry has been very active here so far in this one. Second and goal, Georgia Tech. Mace in the back again. The ball was on the turf, picked up by Sims, and he takes it in for the score. So the exchange was not clean, but Sims alertly scoops it up and takes it in from a yard away in the second TD for Georgia Tech. Jeff Sims on the short run. Well, perhaps not so used to taking that snap from center. So many quarterbacks in this day and age across the college football landscape taking it from that gun, the shotgun snap. And, you know, when you get in these situations, that's what I, I'd i like to think would be a little bit easier, but you, you can't forget about that snap, especially in these wet conditions. So Maglia with the extra point. So Sims now with four rushing TDs. Three of those came in the win against North Carolina, and now he's got another one from about a yard away. And off the top, as you take a look at Sims, the former Sandalwood Saint from Jacksonville, Florida, and I talked about how the game has kind of slowed down for him. Um, I know it's not a, uh, a name they like to hear around these parts, but, but Michael Jordan, you know, talked about how big that, that hoop got for him and how the game just slowed down at, at a certain point in his career. And, and you know, it, that can be dangerous for, for an outstanding athlete like a Jeff Sims, but it shows on that bobble right there. There's no panic. Let me pick up this rock and get it into the end zone. And fortunately for him, his offensive line did a good job of opening up that hole. And it's 14 to nothing like that. And let us not forget the last time these two teams got together. It, it, it was all kinds of ugly with Georgia Tech scoring 56 points. The most ever scored by either team in the 88 years these guys have been getting together. Stinson. Fights for the 20-yard line. They'll mark him at the 21. 19 yards on the return by Stinson. So Duke has the football. Chance to respond. We take a look at our Toyota Impact players. Brought to you by your local Toyota dealers with James Bates. Well, we saw Jalen Calhoun them try to get him involved in the mix. A little screen underneath earlier that was just swamped up by the Georgia Tech defense. Guys like Ace Ely. Well, that was a pretty good pick for an impact player. He's already made a big impact in this one. The transfer from Maryland with four tackles. That's a solid first down play up to the 30-yard line. Nine yards on that rush. And that's Durant. Wanye Thomas, good to see him back into the ball game, James. Yeah, after the <laughs> laying on that bench over there, really good to see number one back in there, especially if you're a Tech fan. Second and short for Duke. Holmberg hands it off to Durant. He's got first down yardage at the 34-yard line. He got four to move the sticks and James you're talking about the history between these two teams it goes all the way back to 1933 and they have played every year since Duke working on a three-game home winning streak 
And Coach Cut trying to add to it and trying to put some points on the board. Already down 14. And Duran will help him get down there, that's for sure. Duran again on a slow developing play for a yard near the 35 yard line. Mateo Durant seems to be at his best in that downhill north-south style when they're opening up those gaps between the tackle box where he's not delaying and, and, and being hesitant where he's able to just hit the ball and go downhill right now. Second leading rusher in the ACC to start the day Mateo Durant but he was only two yards behind Sean Tucker of Syracuse. So we'll compare the numbers after the day is done. The Orange playing later today against Wake Forest at 3.30 Eastern. Here's a little draw lip and exactly what I'm talking about. He, he stutter steps over there to get that football and then he puts those, he doesn't really even put those pads down. He's more of a little bit of an upright runner, uh, but he delivers the blow on contact and always will get you a couple extra yards. He's a good looking back and obviously the numbers are showing. He'll go up the middle. Fight his way into Georgia Tech real estate, the 49-yard line, and seven yards. Mateo Durant, the senior, 6'1 and 195 pounds. Here's the hurry up. Georgia Tech able to get a substitution in there. And wow, they were definitely ready. So many times when you get this tempo going, when you get a good play, the defense isn't ready. Andrew Thacker's defense is ready to go. Carpenter. Good job squaring up Duran as he tried to turn that corner. Physical, physical football team defensively. There's some big bodies, even the corners, even the defensive backs are big and physical and they can all run for Georgia Tech. Here's a big third down now for Duke. 0 for 2 so far in the first quarter on third down. Holmberg, quarterback run first down inside the 45 yard line. He was gonna run that one all the way and he picked up eight. Charlie Thomas and Carpenter combined on the stop. Defensive coordinator Thacker of Georgia Tech coaching him up. Fresh set of downs. And All kinds of movement and a couple of penalty markers are out. Offside, defense, number 42, five-yard penalty. Skip first down. Jordan Dominic jumping the gun. Tom, you remember the play? <laughs> remember the play Jordan Dominic had the, the strip sack fumble recovered for the touchdown last year's game against Duke. Pretty impressive. Holmberg, just his second pass. It's on time, and it's into the end zone. Jake Bobo runs under that one, and it's a touchdown for the Blue Devils. Gunner likes him, so do his offensive lineman over there hugging him up. And when you set up that run and you get it going and it really starts to work, you hit him with that play pass and you can get some guys back behind in the secondary. And that's just what they needed here for the Blue Devils. Already trailing by two touchdowns, they cut the lead in half. Just the second pass attempt of the game by Holmberg. And Charlie Hamm will add the extra points. So David Cutcliffe and the Blue Devils on the board. 37 yards, Holmberg to Bobo. Jordan Waters is the back in there. The, the fake went to, and it's just right from the snap. Bobo was on the fly, and the senior from North Andover, Massachusetts. All alone, great job of looking it in. And how about the touch pass by Gunnar Holmberg? Beautifully thrown football for a guy that, as you mentioned, just the second pass of the afternoon. It's also the first receiving TD of the season for the senior Jake Bobo. And for Holmberg, his fifth passing touchdown of the year. 37 yards in total on the connection. And so Duke, a counter punch by David Cutcliffe and the Blue Devils in his 14th season on the Duke sideline. 46th year in coaching. As they say, James, he's forgotten more about football than most people will ever know. And what a great conversation we had yesterday with Coach Cutcliffe. Well, and, and you know, it's it's fun to talk ball with him, but every bit as much fun to, to just learn life lessons from Coach David Cutcliffe. I always appreciate the time that we get to spend with him with all of these coaches. Jeff Collins, it's always a lot of fun as well. 
Gibbs makes the fair catch. So Georgia Tech with a 14-7 lead and the football. An exciting first quarter of action. As we take a look at our Toyota Impact players, brought to you by your local Toyota dealers, James. Well, it was an easy one, Georgia Tech offense. Jameer Gibbs, especially, he's got the speed, he's, he's got the moves, uh, not only from that running back spot, lining up behind the quarterback and taking that football and going with it. But as we found out last week and early in this game, he's got good hands. He can catch it and fly as well. Chaka Hayward is the man there in the middle. The quiet leader, big time football player. He's already been active today. He's going to have to keep it up for all four quarters. To the ground on first down with Dante Smith at a couple of yards. Sophomore from Spring Hill, Tennessee was tripped up. He got a little bit more Tennessee flavor in this football game than usual. You, you don't get that a lot. I, I like that. Jeff Ferris, the offensive coordinator for Coach Cut. He's Tennessee boy. Sims freelancing, directing traffic, ultimately tucks and runs and goes out of bounds safely near the 30-yard line. Dwayne Carter forced him out three yards on the run by Sims. Well, even when they, they've got you figured out, they don't. And, and what a luxury for Jeff Collins to have, for Dave Patton, his offensive coordinator, to have. You know, a lot of guys in that situation, you may get to them eventually and, and, and bring them down. Jeff Sims, they're covered down the field. All right, let me tuck this and let me get what I can and make it third down and manageable. What a big third down here. Similar type space on the field when they had that big 77-yard touchdown reception. They've converted the two previous third downs. This one, an interception just beyond the 40-yard line. Interception, Duke Jeremiah Lewis has it for the Blue Devils. Big time play for the Blue Devils. Co-defensive coordinators Ben Albert, Matt Guerreri, and the pressure's going to come. They bring four, and look at the pressure get there up the middle from Dwayne Carter in the tight coverage and taking advantage of it. Just a ball hawk. Jeremiah Lewis led the team with 10 pass breakups last year. This ball may be a little bit off the mark in second interception for Lewis on the season. So there is a player down for Georgia Tech, and that's Jordan Williams, number 54. In Tech, gold, white, and blue. So Sims throws the interception, and that's his third of the season, and it gives Duke tremendous field possession after Lewis came up with the pick. Third on the season, but the first two were the first two plays, or, or two series, I should say, against Pitt. And there's Williams popping up as they'll help him off. Jeff Collins out there as well with the training staff. But a, a couple balls batted there at the line by Pitt. One was turned into a touchdown by Kenny Pickett. Go figure in that Pitt Panther offense. But the other one was re returned for a touchdown. And this one's safe to say that, that this one a little bit more on Jeff Sims as he talks it over over on the bench. So let's see how he responds. They like the way he responded to the slow start last week. Coach David Cutcliffe has to be happy. With, even though they spotted him 14 points, now you trail him by seven and get that football back inside the 30-yard line in a game last week in the loss to North Carolina. They didn't make it into the red zone one time the entire game. So trying to finish, finish that last drive. Here would be a nice place to finish for the Blue Devils and tie this thing up at 14 as we near the end of the first quarter. You saw that Coach Cutcliffe was the ACC Coach of the Year in 13 and 12. In 2013, also the National Coach of the Year. And Duke was Coastal Champs, went all the way to that ACC Championship game, but lost to Florida State 45 to 7. See if they maybe go up top here. Into the pile with Durant. He's up to ninth all time in rushing. Here in school history at Duke, got two yards there. Mm -hmm. 
Holmberg will give it to him again. Drives his way down to the 20. Some powerful running from Mateo Durant, the senior. Jordan Dominic had to make the tackle. Jordan Durant getting a lot of activity today. And he's crossed the 2,000-yard threshold with his efforts so far today for Durant. 11 carries and 55 yards. Oh, got tripped up right at the 20. That was third and short. And I don't know if he got there, James. Charlie Thomas on the stop. Yeah, it looked like he he tripped right as he got that ball. Wet day, rain early on, and it might have even been one of his own players' friendly fire that he tripped over, and so he is short. He's a yard short. Fourth down and one. Thacker and Collins, the two defensive minds for Tech. Holmberg quickly needed to get to the 19-yard line. Looks like this could be awfully close. Duke had been four of seven prior to this fourth down attempt in this situation. They're spotting that ball right near the 19 of Georgia Tech. How close is this right here with Holmberg? He didn't get much on the initial thrust, James. No, he didn't. It was a good job. You see all those blue hats. Nice low level firing off by that offensive line to get pad under pad and maybe just enough space to move that football. From our yellow line, it sure looked like he had it all. Wow. Oh. Not enough by a chain link. Wow. I mean, the old school chains tell the story. You know, with all the advancements we've had in technology and everything, we still go old school with the chains. Exactly 10 yards and not enough for Holmberg. Yeah, don't get me up on that soapbox. Lasers. Those old chains, as, as much as I like, <laughs> I like the, the chains, James. I, I like the chains, but if they want to speed it up, lasers. We'd, we'd be on, on to the next I'll, series by now. I'll tell you who didn't like the chains. Duke did not like the chains on fourth down on that last sequence. And think of the momentum after the interception. Oh, Georgia well, Tech stops him on fourth down, James. Well, Coach Cutcliffe very upset with perhaps that spot there. And not too happy, I'm guessing, with his team because finishing. Finishing in first downs, they get neither of the two unable to capitalize after that Jeremiah Lewis interception. Last time Georgia Tech had the football. Got to take advantage. Lewis with his second interception of the season against Sims, who tries to run it out of the edge and runs out of room. Maybe a couple for Sims. Nice job, and it's tough to, to outrace this guy to the corner. But Leonard Johnson does a great job of doing just that. You got to get outside. You got to get outside and turn him back in. Not only does Johnson do that, but he's able to drop Jeff Sims as well. So a short gain on first down after the stop. Sims on second down. Jordan Mason will carry it. No gain for Mason. That's going to bring up third and long, just like that for the Jackets. Aeneas Peebles, sophomore out of Raleigh, doing a great job on the snap, getting down low and ripping underneath. Make that drop it in the backfield, and here's one more guy banged up. That's Mike Minahan, and this has been, it's been a rough go at offensive line for Jeff Collins. Big guys up front. Bunch of them playing banged up last week, had a couple more guys hurt. Kenny Cooper, the starting right guard, missed last week's game. Ryan Johnson, big hoss, played at about 70%. There's Minahan in the center. And see those legs flying around in there. And there's one more chance to take a look at Peebles big play. More like Bam Bam than Pebbles. <laughs> Uh, hopefully Saturday morning cartoons. Did you watch them this morning, James? Is that the inspiration there? No, I didn't. I was getting ready for football <laughs> this morning. And I, I, I got to do, do your five-mile five mile jog first this morning, right, and around Durham. I could use some fruity pebbles. What a setting for college football, Georgia Tech. Coming to town.
One and two in conference play so far for the Yellow Jackets. Duke is 0-1 in the conference. And we've completed the first quarter from Wallace Wade Stadium. 14-7 Jackets lead. David Cutcliffe and the Blue Devils trailing the visiting Yellow Jackets 14-7. Our numbers from the first quarter, 106, 66 total yards for Georgia Tech and James, 77 of those on a third down touchdown play in the first quarter. Sims thrown at the Gibbs. Yeah, opening drive, setting the tone on a third down, and here's another chance. Come up with a big third down conversion. Let's see what we got. Sims, little toss, that's not going to do it. P.J. Harris made the catch, but here comes Jeremiah Lewis to blow it up. And there is a penalty marker. There is no foul for an eligible receiver downfield. The pass is behind the line of scrimmage. Second down. It's the difference between Saturdays and Sundays. In the NFL, guys can't get down the field to block. That ball's behind the line of scrimmage, so they'll pick that flag up. And the guy who picked one off just a few moments ago, Jeremiah Lewis, with a big stop, cutting down the back, the receiver, and forcing a punt. So a nice stand after a what looked to be a wasted opportunity after the interception. See if they can do anything with it. Boylan is the return man. Shanahan to punt for Georgia Tech. It's a low line drive. It's going to bounce right to Boylan. Can't get past the first man. That punt was 46 yards by Shanahan. The return, three from Boylan, Charlie Thomas on the special teams tackle. Mateo Durant in our game, 12 carries, 55 yards, went across 2,000 yards for his career, and he is our Hardys star to watch. Yeah, we've got two exciting running backs in this football game here today. Jameer Gibbs and Mateo Durant, the senior from McCormick High School in Plum Blanche, Brant, South Carolina. Living with a bunch of Georgia Bulldog fans, he said, growing up. Oh, he got taken down in the backfield. Quez Jackson out of nowhere to take down Durant, and that's a loss of three. Yeah, some good linebackers on this team. Thomas, Ely, Quez Jackson. Nobody there to account for him, so Durant unable to get those shoulders square and get going downhill, doing what he does best, thanks to number four, guy who had 14 tackles against Pitt, Quez did. They'll give this to Durant. Got a couple there. You saw on the Hardy Star to Watch graphic, that in the first game of the season, which was a loss on the road at Charlotte, Durant had 29 carries for 255 yards, James. That was a school record for Durant, who's gone over 100 yards four times this season, including last week in the win against, or the loss, rather, at North Carolina. Waters the back to the right of Holmberg. Here they come. Snap was a little low. Holmberg, double teamed and taken down. At the 37-yard line, Jordan Dominic there, number 42 in white, and there is no gain for Holmberg. Thatcher brings the, the blitz, and look at this, look, in a decent job of, of, keep, of getting it picked up, and then Holmberg has to scramble, and that's the difference between a Sims and a Holmberg right now. Sims, you'd like to think probably a couple extra steps, and then he finds a guy downfield. We've seen it twice already today. Wilson punts to Ray, moving to his right at the 15. Shakes the first man. Cuts it up the middle of the field. Some room. Azende Ray to the 50-yard line and stepping out of bounds. That punt was 48 yards, but Ray took it back 30 from the 49 of Duke. Georgia Tech will have the ball when we come back. Of the sidelines and Abby Labar. Well, as a part of our Synovus greatness made here, guys, you just heard a round of applause because it's Teacher Appreciation Day. And the Duke Blue Devils went and visited some schools last week as a part of a community service event. Dwayne Carter led the way, guys, for them. It's called Second and Seven. It's a national program where they go and promote literacy in classrooms, read, donate books. Dwayne Carter said they had a blast. We only spent an hour and a half with the kids, but you would have thought we knew them forever. They were telling us they loved us. They were writing us cards. And so he just said, 
that it's a good reminder not being able to do that stuff over the last year because of COVID, now being back in the community of how much bigger the game is than themselves, guys. Ah, uh, so cool. Thanks for telling us about that, Abby. And, and it, way back when, that's, that's one of my favorite memories, going to some of the uh, elementary schools in Gainesville, Florida, and reading books with the kids. So uh, making some special memories, not just for the kids, but for the players as well. Making a huge impact on the youngsters in this area. Jameer Gibbs on the run, there was a penalty marker. Six yards on the run for Gibbs. Johnson there, Young as well on the play defensively for Duke. Foul. Face mask, number 38 on the defense. 15 yards to be added on to the end of the run. Correction, the player was number 33. 15-yard penalty, first down. That's Leonard Johnson, and he... Gosh, he, he wanted to make sure he was secure in the tackle. First, he had his hand on the back of the jersey, and he goes and he grabs anything he can, even though he's got help coming over. Johnson just making sure he's got it. So an unfortunate grab there for Leonard Johnson, and unfortunate for Duke because a fresh set of downs and the jackets are driving. Sims on a little play fake. Looking down the sideline, that's too far for the intended receiver, Malachi Carter. So, interesting play call, Dave Patino. You, you get a guy, hey, let's see if he's hanging his head. He just cost his team 15 yards in the first down. Let's go right at him. Let's go right at Malachi Carter, an outstanding receiver, but a nice job to respond and play the next play by Leonard Johnson. Nice coverage, forcing Sims to throw that ball out of bounds, second and 10. Offense coordinator Dave Patino is not going to like this. A little bit out of sync there up on the line and a couple of yellow flags. Carter was the guy who had that key 39 yard catch on that second scoring drive Outside. for Georgia Defense. Tech. Five yard penalty. Still second down. I stand corrected, James. No problem that? for Georgia Tech. How about that? Yeah, and that's one thing that Georgia Tech has done is they've kept it pretty clean. Only 27 penalties coming into this game. It's, I believe, top 12 in the nation. Duke, not too many more. 35 coming in. And Georgia Tech, even though they haven't had a lot of penalties, they certainly had some costly penalties timing-wise against Pitt in the loss last weekend. Second fewest penalty yardage against for Georgia Tech in the ACC. This is Sims taking off right side. Hits a roadblock, comes back left. Puts the helmet down inside the 15-yard line. They'll mark him at the 13. So reversing field, Jeff Sims. On the rush, and Leonard Johnson made the stop 10 yards. Now look at the big bodies moving around, and good play call again. You get Gibbs, all eyes on Gibbs, stretching him out there. And then it's up to Sims, and a nice job to rally by this Duke defense to make sure they don't hit the home run. Make them chip away and make them finish as well. One for one in the red zone for Georgia Tech with a touchdown. Sims had a one-yard rushing TD in the first quarter. It was Jameer Gibbs on the tackle for six yards, on the rush rather, for six yards. Christian Rory, the sophomore from Raleigh, North Carolina. We are in the CPI security red zone with the Yellow Jackets. Down close to the 10-yard line. On second down. And leading 14-7. Trying to go wide as Gibbs and turn that corner. Collision at the sideline, nearly eight. Jameer Gibbs. Freshman running back, two yards. Again, good job on the perimeter defensively for Duke to stretch it out there. Make sure they keep these backs, keep this, this quarterback and Jeff Sims. Keep them bottled up and turned in. Don't let them get that corner turned over there on the sidelines. Dave Patino. Also spent time as the offensive coordinator with Jeff Collins at Temple. Coach Collins was the head coach at Temple for two years, and he's decided to call a timeout. Inside the red zone with the ball down near the Duke 10. And Georgia Tech leading 14-7. The statue of the legend, Wallace Wade, head coach for 16 years here at Duke. And Blue Devils trailing 14-7. Took him to a couple of Rose Bowls and the leader in all-time wins with 110. 
Next week, more ACC football. We're on the road in Charlottesville for the 73rd all-time meeting between Duke and Virginia. The Cavaliers have won six in a row in this series. Scott Stadium is the destination, 1230 Eastern. You want to check your local listings for the game and time in your area. Virginia winning last year against the Blue Devils in Charlottesville, 38-20. We'll see those teams next week. Watching Duke and Georgia Tech here. Two for four on third down in the game. Sims with the time. That was deflected. Deflected by Gary Smith, the sophomore from Sheffield, Tennessee. And he makes the play for Duke on third down. T-E, double N-E, double S, double E, Tennessee. Good mirror technique, defensive lineman. Using those hands, separate. Separate that body. You're not going to get there. Get those hands up. That's excellent job. And it's it's a timing. It's a timing thing as well. These defensive linemen are taught a lot like on a field goal block unit. Separate and get those hands up and knock it down. Here's the Tennessee transfer kicker, Samaglia, from 25 yards away. And he nails it. Now 7 of 10 on the season for Samaglia. And the lead for Georgia Tech is now 17-7 on the field goal. In America, the... Works Landroid. Works Landroid Robotic Lawnmower. Available at MyLandroid.com. The future of lawn care is here. Last year in late November, it was Georgia Tech winning at home, 56 to 33 to stop a three-game losing streak in the series. And they've got the lead after the 25-yard field goal by Samaglio to increase it to 17-7. Here's Stinson on the return. Stinson to the 30, cut down at the 32-yard line. Jalen Stinson, 28 yards on the return of the kickoff. Miles Sims making the tackle on special teams. Well, putting some points on the board in that third phase, these Yellow Jackets, but that third phase, this game continues to be a little bit back and forth and tight like this. Needless to say, is going to be key to who wins this football game in the rest of this first half and in the second half. Holmberg looking left all the way. Puts a little touch on it. It's complete. Marweedy up the sideline. 45-yard line. Marweedy at a first down. Blue Devils. Juan Ye Thomas on the tackle. Georgia Tech. The perfect three for three for Gunnar Holmberg so far. Get him on the fly a little bit. And a little bit behind him. One thing the coach Cut's been working on with him. Trying to lead those receivers. Holmberg slides down at about the 47 or 8. A couple of yards on that slide. How about Holmberg against Kansas in that victory at home here at Wallace Wade Stadium? Four rushing touchdowns. Also threw for over 300 yards in the win against Northwestern. 314 yards, and that was a career high. This pass on target. That's Robertson near midfield. In fact, they're going to mark him right at the 53 yards on the pass play. James Holmberg is a first-year starter. He averages... 265 yards passing per game. That's fourth best in the ACC. Yeah, he, uh, he's been spot on so far. Let's see if he can get one up to the sticks here on third down now, Tom. Two for five on third down for Duke. Slides it over the middle, complete in stride. Good look and play as Jared Garner made the catch and a little bit of run afterward. And the junior from Harrisburg, North Carolina, got 18 on the play. Well, and giddy up. Look at him. Here comes the snap. How about that? Good job getting set. Chains weren't even set yet as Durant backs his way inside the 25-yard line. Expect more of the same right now. Not giving them a chance to substitute. They're over the ball. There's your replay, but you better. Oh, look at the truck. They're quick, too. They can do it. Nine yards previous play out on the edge. This is Robertson. Thought he was going to get a little bit more out of that one to the 19-yard line for Robertson. By the way, the chain's still not set. <laughs> nothing, against those, nothing against those guys because Duke is going fast and just a little slip down there for Robertson. Come the other way with Durant. Turns it up the middle of the field into Wanye Thomas. Six yards Durant. Hold on to your hats, James Bates. Yes, sir. Getting a little balance here. Slinging it around. Coach Cutton and running it with Durant. This is... 
just what you want if you're a Blue Devil fan. And liking this tempo from offensive coordinator Jeff Ferris as well. Play fake to Durant. Robertson at the 10. They'll mark him just inside the 10 yard line. Four yards on that quick pass play. There is a Georgia Tech player down. There's two actually. Well, we got Miles Brooks right there, number 20. And we'll check on both of these players when we come back to Durham, North Carolina. Brooks, the other player who is down. A down to field level in Abbey. Well, Mateo Duran is uh, pretty much showing us what he can do on the field. But off the field, we were trying to get to know him yesterday. And I noticed he had an arm full of bracelets when we were talking with him. And he said every single one of these has a meaning. Some of them he hasn't even taken off in years. So just some things that are very important to him. One bracelet is from his teammate, Zach Thompson, in honor of his brother who passed away. Another one is a bracelet he hasn't taken off since his sophomore year when it, one of his coaches was battling cancer. So he says all this symbols, all the people in his life that impact and motivate me it's just a reflection of what I do on the field everything that those people have taught me and it just makes him proud to play so guys you know he has those bracelets on today yeah absolutely Abby and, and he said in high school I didn't like stuff on my wrist but now I don't mind it and it shows that it make me feel a little claustrophobic all that uh, jewelry all the time Speaking of jewelry, we, get, we haven't congratulated on our broadcast, Abby oh, LaBar. Oh. She's engaged here recently, so some more, some more bling to go around. So congratulations, Abby. And yeah, Mateo, he actually said, there you go, woohoo! All right. <laughs> but Mateo was telling us that one of, one of his teammates found a couple weeks ago. Here's a big third down and one for he and the Blue Devils. From just inside the 10 yard line, Durant up the middle. Down close to the five and a first down. They're going to mark him at about the six or seven. And so that's enough for the first down. He got three officially. And because he got three officially, he's up to eighth place on the all-time rushing list here at Duke. Look at that push by this offensive line. Jack Wallabaugh, who didn't start against North Carolina. Penn started for him, but he's back there in the starting lineup. Jalot, Monk, McIntyre, Barton, the starters here today, along with Jack. Tenth play of the drive. Durant head of steam barrels his way into the line. They gave it right to Durant on the direct snap. That's his 18th carry of the ball game, and he got four. Yeah, I'll say. Look at him. Shortens the neck a little bit of Wanye Thomas. Wanye Thomas already had a tough go on this one. He took the load there for Mateo Durant. Near the goal line, but not quite enough. Mateo Durant. Got two, Wesley Walker on the stop. I'd get right back over the ball and snap it just the way this offensive line has really done a good job of pushing around these guys defensively. I'd even hit him with a little bit of a tempo right here and just hand it to Durant. Fifth in the conference in red zone offense. Trying to complete the drive. Durant up and over and in for the Blue Devils. Officially a one-yard carry and a touchdown, but Teo Durant. This is actually a little battle that Georgia Tech, they get the low pad level and submarine underneath. They do a good job of reestablishing that offensive line, but the athleticism of Mateo Durant going up and over, nothing there for him. Sometimes you'll have that second wave, those linebackers that are taught. We used to do drills where you, you, you time it where you have to leave the same time as that running back. Nobody there on the second wave for him. And so up and over and in for Durant. It's now nine rushing touchdowns on the season for Mateo Durant. Whistles before Ham's extra point. False start. Kicking team, number 71. Our penalty will continue with the try. Durant second in the conference with those nine rushing touchdowns. And tied for sixth in the nation to start the afternoon. It's worth reminding this Duke team at halftime. Hey, a couple little penalties here and there. Don't, don't make one of those penalties one that costs us in a tight game here in the second half. Got to stay crisp and clean throughout. And the extra point is no good from him. So after the drive, 12 plays and 68 yards, they're also... There's a flag on that try, and that is against Georgia Tech. Penalty is half a distance to the goal. 
We'll continue with the trial. So let's try this for a third time. During that drive, Duke was five for five through the air, three for three on third down, and Ham's going to get another chance. Yeah, Offside he, Georgia Tech. He's been out there for a while. I don't like Ham when it's been out for a long time. <laughs> Maybe a country Ham. Where's Ham from? Is he from the country? Then we'll be okay. Atlanta, Georgia. Uh -huh. Toe will meet Leather for the extra point. And this time, it's good. Two on that, Bates. Oh, big retry there, Wormy. Georgia Tech, that's costly. That's as costly as can be. Points at a premium, and you got a chance to have that four-point lead rather than the three, but you're helping them out a little bit after Mateo Durant and the Blue Devils drove it right down the field as you take a look at that Yellowwood five-star drive summary. Believe me. Doesn't have the Yellowwood tag on. You don't want <laughs> well, wait a the second head coach is actually here. He's today. here, yes. Uh, yeah. All right, there's the three third downs converted on that drive. There's a look at not only the, the smile of Mateo Durant, but those, those wristbands. The motivation helps him do his thing that Abby was telling you about just a few moments ago. Our Yellowwood five-star drive summary, 12 plays at 68 yards, ninth rushing touchdown of the season for Mateo Durant. So Georgia Tech took a 14-0 lead in the first quarter. Duke has come back. They scored late in the first. Bobo on the 37-yard touchdown catch from Holmberg. Georgia Tech added a field goal, and moments ago, one yard away, Mateo Durant. Jameer Gibbs, kickoff return, past the 20 to the 21, and that's exactly how long that return is for Gibbs. Gibbs doing it all for this Georgia Tech team. Sometimes you'll see the number one of Gibbs returning these, these kicks, and sometimes you'll see Wanye Thomas and Mike Flynn giving us a nice cheat on that. <laughs> How do we tell them apart? Well, Gibbs has dreads hanging out the back of That's his helmet, right. and Wanye Thomas doesn't. Little, little tricks of the trade, huh? Mike Flynn, Sports Information Director, Georgia Tech, and what a tremendous job all of those folks throughout the ACC do to help us do our jobs during the course of the week. Dante Smith, right side, still upright. And beyond that 35-yard line, let's see where they mark him out. Looks like the 38 or so. Ben Fry stopped him 17 yards. Yeah, Dante Smith, just a sophomore. He, he's a good fit for this offense, too. 5'11", 202. Scooting out and making things happen. Nice breather for Jameer Gibbs at times. Sims. I don't think he had any intention of completing that pass, James, as Hayward, Hayward rather, was providing the pressure. Nate Thompson <laughs> trying to change that, make it a complete pass, but to the defense. Nice job not only to cover down the field, but to have a body there for Jeff Sims, make sure he doesn't damage, do the damage with his feet. And I guess there was a flag on that play. Let's find out from Jeff Flanagan. There's no foul for an eligible receiver downfield. The quarterback was illegally throwing the ball away. Second down. So with that incompletion, Sims has missed on his last four tries after completing his first four passes of this game for Sims, who threw for 359 yards in the loss at home in Atlanta last Saturday against Pitt. Wants to chuck it again. This is a deep ball. This one incomplete. Was looking for McGowan. It's well defended back there by Jalen Alexander, number 32. Well, welcome back, Kyrick McGowan, the senior, the transfer from Northwestern, missed that pit game. And that ball thrown a little bit underneath, and, and Duke, good coverage, good good makeup by Jalen Alexander. He was beat a little bit, put his head down, and just got in the picture. But then make sure you snap that head around, because they'll throw that flag if you're not looking for that football. So. Good job defensively to force a third down and long against the dangerous one. Two for five on third down. They've missed on their last three chances in this situation. Sims is dancing. 
Pocket holds. He leaves. Throws on the run up near the 45, and it's knocked away on the sideline and incomplete. Malachi Carter, the intended receiver, incomplete in fourth down for Georgia Tech. Big stand by this Duke defense. Watch Jordan Mason. Boom, nice pickup there in the backfield on the blitzer. Sims forced to run outside, and Duke has done a good job. Earlier in the game, Jeff Sims would try to buy some time with those legs and find some guys open, but they have locked them down defensively. Matt Guerrero's defense doing a fantastic job after spotting the Yellow Jackets 14 points. David Shanahan, the freshman punter from Castle Island, Ireland. And Scott Boylan is deep. This is going to bounce at about the 37. The market up at the 43. The punt was just 22 yards. P.J. Harris touched it, but it's fine field position for Duke at its own 43 for this drive with 542 to go. Yes, sir. Duke will take that to start the field. Field position there almost midfield. 542 left to play in this first half. Durant looking for a crease up past the 45-yard line. Walker on the tackle, six yards, Durant. You better bring the wood when you're trying to drop 21. He was hit and still gained about three yards. Put him in a second down and four situation. 22nd carry in the game for Mateo Durant. Slips down. Ely there to stop him. Great so job. third down now, James, for Duke. How about Ace Ely? Just continues to make big plays for this defense. That's his fifth tackle of the day, knifing through their penetration, disrupting this offense. Throw by Holmberg. That's knocked away. Looking for Bobo and Trey Swilling got a piece of it to the turf and fourth down. Fantastic job there, Tom, by Swilling. No, hey, where am I on the field? Where are they trying to get? Right here, he's going to break it off. He runs that route right with the receiver, comes underneath, and rakes it away. Jeff Collins, a defensive coach. Andrew Thatcher, his defensive coordinator. Nice fundamentals there by one of the leaders of this defense, Swilling. Deep man number two, Kyrick McGowan. Porter Wilson gets it away. McGowan, an immediate fair catch signal, and he makes it successfully at the 10-yard line. 42 yards on the punt. Georgia Tech will start from its own 10. And just inside of five minutes to go in this second quarter, the Yellow Jackets built a 14-0 lead. As we head down to the sidelines, and Abby LaBar. Well, Batesy, you mentioned it earlier how special of a player Jameer Gibbs was. And Coach Collins tapped him Offensive Player of the Week internally for good reason. I was talking with offensive lineman Devin Cochran, who transferred from Vanderbilt. And I said, what is it about Gibbs? And he said, he just makes it so effortless, so easy. And guys, Devin Cochran had a running back in Keyshawn Vaughn, who went to be a second-round draft pick. He said Keyshawn didn't even make it that effortless. Wow. Yeah, you, you can tell from way up here, too, Ab, you got a bird. We got the bird's eye view, and you get to see it right down there on field level. Some outstanding athletes, not just for Georgia Tech, but Duke's getting after it as well. Mateo Durant putting on a show, running that rock. There's an incomplete pass. So with an offense, you talked about that engine, Abby, too, off the top, and how Duke was going to try to shut down this engine that makes this Yellow Jacket offense go. They have found a way here in the second quarter, especially to slow down this fast-paced offense. Last seven passes by Sims have been incomplete. Does have the long TD pass of 77 yards to Gibbs. This is the worst starting field position, and it might get All worse start. for Georgia Tech. Offense, number 85. Five-yard penalty, still second down. 85 is the tight end, Billy Ward, freshman from Locust Grove, Georgia. Gibbs had a couple of rushing TDs for Jeff Collins in last year's win against Duke in Atlanta. There you saw the movement. Picking back five yards, second down and 15 now in their own end zone. Sims 
Runs out of the end zone and throws up near the 20. Catch made. Close to the first down marker. That should be enough. McGowan made the catch. Good quick release by Sims on the run. There you're going to see a defender trigger. You got to come up and respect and vacating that pocket underneath where you don't even have anybody underneath, but right in the middle of that zone. Nice throw and catch. First catch of the game from McGowan of 17 yards. Sims cannot break away. There is no game. Lummy Young, senior from Anderson, South Carolina, with the tackle of Sims. Good looking tackle there. One of the toughest things to do in football is tackle in open field, maybe in all sports. Kind of like hitting that curve. He's second on the team with 35 tackles coming into this one. There's Lummy Young. Had seven tackles in that loss to the Tar Heels last time out. Duke's now lost three in a row for the victory bell after winning the previous three. This is Gibbs weaving his way. Seven yards, Jameer Gibbs. Tom, defensively, Duke has done a fine job of kind of settling down and playing fundamentally sound football and making Sims and this offense earn and just chip away all the way. You gave up an explosive to start the scoring on the big play to Jameer Gibbs. With 3.20 left in this first half, do not give up an explosive. Keep them all in front of you and make them earn it. That's when the mistakes happen and get that football back. Two of six on third down. Sims through the progression, back the other way, 35 yard line, flag is out. McGowan made the catch, but there is a penalty marker. If it stands, it's first down yardage. Seven yards on the play. Indication against the Blue Devils. Holding defense on an eligible receiver, number 39, pass cross the line of scrimmage. It's a 10 yard penalty and an automatic first down. Up top, there you see Jeremiah Lewis. Working on Kalani Norris. Again, quick on the trigger on that, that throw that was completed by Jeff Sims. Sims will throw it again. Open man on the sideline. And more inside the 40. And that's Norris. 25 yards on the play for Georgia Tech. So Kalani Norris getting involved. The sophomore from Columbus High School down in Miami, Florida. Moving those chains plenty of time. 2.30 left here in the first half. From the 36 of Duke. Sims back the other way, and that one will sail and be incomplete. Trying to come back from Malachi Carter. Nate Thompson in coverage. Stops the clock with 2.22 to go in the second quarter. Tom, I, I think it's a, it's a smart play here. Stop that clock, live to play a second down and 10, as opposed to trying to force that ball in. You're on the far hash all the way across the field. That's a recipe for disaster right there, maybe in years past. That's one thing that Jeff Sims tries to do. Smart play, throw it out of bounds, good coverage defensively, second down and 10, here we go. 253 total yards in the first half so far for Georgia Tech with its quarterback, Jeff Sims. He'll hand it off, try to throw a block, but this play is gonna be dropped for a loss. Smith is taken down. Shaka Hayward first on the scene, loss of seven for Georgia Tech. Big play. Yeah, a little bit long on this mesh, and it's it's tough for a running back as it is. Dante Smith held that ball a little bit longer. I don't think it would have mattered because Shaka Hayward, the former high school safety, does a great job of getting up there and shutting it down, turning it back inside and making that play. Good job by the defense and by their quiet leader, Shaka Hayward, number 42. So Duke is taking a timeout with 2.13 to go in the second quarter. Just dropped Georgia Tech for a seven-yard loss. Yeah, the mid-60s, I guess you can go shirtless. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's nice out there. Yeah, the, the rain didn't... They must have had shirts on while it was raining. It didn't help hurt the body paint. <laughs> Although that D... Need to fix that D at halftime, young man. On this natural grass surface at Wallace Wade Stadium with David Cutcliffe. Incredible improvement to this facility over the years and 
during the tenure of Coach Kreckler's 14th year. 77 wins as the head coach at Duke. That's third most in school history. Told you Wallace Wade had 110 for whom this stadium is named after. for Duke. Again, don't force anything and turn it over. Give him that short field with two minutes left. Sims pass intercepted. Anticipated and picked down the sideline. Leonard Johnson. And he's out of bounds here the 32, but you can see that Johnson in some discomfort, and now he has to go down. So the second interception of the game for the Duke secondary, but Johnson is in pain. Absolutely what you couldn't afford if you're a yellow jacket. Tries to throw the, just a quick hitch on the outside there. Again, a long throw across the field. And we patted Jeff Sims on the back earlier for throwing that one away with the defender squatting right there on the receiver. And unfortunately for Duke, Leonard Johnson pulls up and He's, he, that's, that's six points if, if he doesn't get injured, I think. He keeps those balls in there. And that's his second interception today. And for Johnson this season, James. Yep. Jeremiah Lewis had a pick in the first quarter. Trying to clip that heel. Yeah, a couple of awkward steps there on the sideline for Johnson, who did well to try to stay in bounds. You can see the left foot goes out at that point. I think that was Harris the ball was intended for. And, and Harris, you know, this is, how about the effort by P.J. Harris to clip that heel? Put, take it back a little bit while we have a chance, guys, while we're right here. Take it way back to the, the offensive player. It turns into a defensive player. This is a touchdown saving effort right here. Yeah, you got the interception. Play's not over. Make something happen. Don't hang your head. Watch him clip that heel. That's what you're taught to barely clip that heel. It just barely takes him off his stride. It might be part of the reason why he came up hurt a little bit as they take a look at where to spot this ball. That's good to see Johnson over there walking around. But Harris, touchdown save and play right there after the bad play. Good heads up by the sophomore. And Harris asking, asking this coaching staff, Jeff Collins, who's done a good job? Who's been physical out there from your wide receivers? That's how these big plays happen when you've got your receivers blocking downfield. First guy they mentioned was number 18, Harris, sophomore out of Newton, Georgia, Newton High School. So this was a third down play, James, of the interception by Leonard Johnson. Looks like right near the 35-yard line, the left foot is out of bounds. See that sideline trying to encourage Johnson try to stay in and then he took a couple of awkward steps so they're going to call it the 34 yard line and remember Duke took a timeout so they have some time on the clock 206 to go in the second quarter Blue Devils fighting back from trailing 14 nothing in the first quarter long TD pass by Gibbs he made the catch and run and then Sims took it in from a yard out well here's a chance all the way right between the numbers of Durant who lined up well wide Tariq Carpenter on the tackle Ferris getting creative with his playmaker Durant lining him out wide now he's flanking the quarterback this is Durant slamming into the line at the 25 might be a little bit short of the 24 yard line maybe just a little bit Jeff Ferris the First year co-offensive coordinator, 10th season on the staff, and Durant lost the hat. So he's got to come to the sideline. By the way, that helmet kind of harkens back to the ACC title of 1989 with Coach Spurrier as the head coach here at Duke. Yeah, how about that? ACC champions. The head ball coach when he was roaming the sidelines like David Cutcliffe before. He went to Florida and used to go head to head with Phil Fulmer, David Cutcliffe, and the Tennessee Volunteers and some great rivalries in the 90s. 
Three years for the head ball coach here in Durham, 87, 88, and 89, the ACC champs. He was also an assistant at Duke prior to that and an assistant at Georgia Tech, right, James? Yeah, that's where he started. Yeah, and he's in attendance today. Grandson Gavin is a backup quarterback for the Blue Devils. Timeout taken by Duke. It's their second utilized with 54 seconds left. Third year head coach Jeff Collins at Georgia Tech. Collins spent some time in the SEC as a defensive coordinator at Florida, Mississippi State as well. And he's a Western Carolina grad. Well, David Cutcliffe was a student assistant under Bear Bryant at Alabama. Yeah. I mean, how cool is that? Well, and, and he spent some time talking to the three of us yesterday about you know, the little things that he picked up along the way from great minds like Bear Bryant, like Johnny Majors, you know, and, and things aside from the X's and O's. And we were talking about the weather. It rained early, but fortunately it's, it's beautiful football weather now, nice and dry and cool. But you know, just the little things he makes sure his players know on a wet day. Doesn't like to have the sleeves on his guys because it's hard to grab the skin when it's wet, but not so much. Those sleeves are a little bit easier. How he likes to play offensively, defensively, those, those backs. And so here comes the kicking unit. Charlie Ham from 42 yards away. He's 5 of 7 on the season. Made a career-long 50-yarder in the win at home against Northwestern, and he can tie the ball game with 54 seconds to go in the second quarter. Ham. This one is no good. The 42-yarder by Ham, no good. And Coach Collins and the Yellow Jackets hang on to the lead for the moment. See the body language. Hey, Collins trying to help it out a little bit and getting his guys fired up. The, I don't know if they still call him the juice crew over there, the guys on the <laughs> sidelines, but it's got some juice on the Georgia Tech side of the field. And that's a, you know, in short yardage situations, that, that offensive line for Duke, they've had some success. You had a, a kicker there that missed an extra point a few moments ago. Interesting choice right there. But then he got a second chance, James, because of a Georgia Tech penalty and right. had made what would have been the third attempt at that extra point. So that's three yards. Ben Fry makes the tackle. A little bit of time here for Georgia Tech. We'll see what they do. Big Ben Fry. Wrestling at Duke here again. He, he didn't have any intentions. A great wrestler in high school back in Dublin, Ohio. Dublin Kaufman, which has become a wrestling powerhouse, he was telling us yesterday. And uh, went by and, and watched some wrestling here at Duke and decided he wanted to keep it going. And he keeps it going after football season, that's for sure. It gets even harder. There he is again in the backfield. So Gibbs on the run. That will be the final play of the second quarter. Georgia Tech will not stop the clock, and that will do it. So Duke and Charlie Ham had a chance to tie it there with that 42-yarder, but wide right. And so Georgia Tech will go to the locker room with the lead. Took a 14-0 lead, and now they lead 17-14 down to Abby. Coach, I can imagine you took a nice deep breath after the missed field goal there. Yeah, and I, we went to, to uh, safe to sort of not give them a good look, uh, but the guys are battling. Uh, we got to come back in. We get the ball the second half. We've got to put drives together like we did the first two drives. That's the key. What specifically is Duke doing that allowed them to get into a rhythm and challenged you guys? Yeah, I mean, it's one of the top offenses in college football. They play with a really good tempo. They got a rhythm. Uh, our back settled the guys down. Two big fourth down stops. We got to come out and play at a high level in the second half. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thack is the third-year defensive coordinator, Andrew Thacker, co-DCs, along with Nathan Burton as well. And so, Sims and Gibbs and the Yellow Jackets have the halftime lead. The Ramblin' Wreck with a 17-14 lead over David Cutler from the Duke Blue Devils on that long TD pass to Bobo. Halftime in Durham. We're coming back. This is ACC Football. We're this is the Tempur-Pedic Breeze, and its mission is to make sleep feel unanswered. What impressed you about the turning point with them? I think we've been physical the whole game. If we don't stop ourselves with failing on the fourth down, if we don't have penalties, 
Um, our offense has played well. We've been the more physical of the units out there. Defensively, we don't have a busted assignment on the coverage. We've been physical. Now, a well-coached football team, if I can coach, won't have penalties and those mistakes in the second half. And that's the challenge. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, Abby. Duke gave up 14 points in the first half to Georgia Tech, but only three in that second quarter and only allowed 85 yards after giving up 166 to Georgia Tech in that first quarter. So we are tight here in Durham. Teams last playing here at Wallace Wade Stadium back in 2019. That was mid-October and a win for Duke against Georgia Tech, 41-23. Georgia Tech won in Atlanta a season ago. So the Yellow Jackets, James scored 14 early points, touchdowns on their first two drives, and that included the long TD pass of 77 yards, Sims to Gibbs. But then the two interceptions, mix in a couple of punts, and the field goal as well. That field goal of 25 yards by Brent Samaglia. But lucky for Georgia Tech off of those two picks, no points by Duke. Well, and it goes back to the play right before halftime and, and right before the missed field goal try by Duke. The effort play by P.J. Harris, the receiver. That's one that at the end of this day, if Georgia Tech comes out on top, they may have to give a game ball or, or Waffle House gift certificate, whatever they <laughs> give to those kids over there in Atlanta. He, I know he's got some special award. He takes care of his guys over there, but that that's an effort play, and that's that's anytime you you watch a Jeff Collins press conference or, or we talk to him. I mean, it's it's all about that effort, not just on Saturdays, but in practice as well. And that was a a big play, but a whole half to go, and it will be Georgia Tech, Jameer Gibbs and company to get it started. And one thing, too, that Coach Cut, as he was talking to Abby, he liked the way that his Blue Devils were physical. I would agree with that. I, I've been impressed with the line play, both defensive and offensive, and, and the secondary as well. I, I Coming in, I, I knew that it was a physical group defensively in the secondary for Georgia Tech, but I've been impressed with Dukes as well. It's going to be a good, fun second half. Here we go. That second touchdown drive for the Blue Devils in the second quarter. 12 plays and 68 yards, and Durant went airborne for the TD. Here's Gibbs on the return, blasting through the 25 near the 30 for Jameer Gibbs to return the second half kickoff, 27 yards. And Georgia Tech going on offense first. Here in the third, leading 17-14. Numbers for Sims. The TD pass 77 yards to Gibbs in that first half. Fourth TD pass of the season for Sims. Also a rushing touchdown from a yard away. That gave Georgia Tech the 14-0 lead. Up to the 34-yard line for Dante Smith. Sophomore running back Ben Fry, graduate student on the tackle. How about seven tackles in the game for Fry? Yeah, that, that's you don't see that a lot. Multiple tackles getting up there close to 10. Because unlike a linebacker sitting in the middle of the field, he's on one side of the ball. They've been running at him, and he's been making them pay. Smith for a first down for Georgia Tech up to the 41-yard line. Seven yards, Dante Smith. So back and forth we go. Saw some... Good running by Dante Smith there in the first half. Good to see big Kenny Cooper back in the game after missing last week, leading the way. Injured Kenny Cooper back there at guard is huge for them. A spinning Smith for a couple of yards. Shaka Hayward on the tackle. Good job by Smith. Looked like he was going to be dropped for a, a loss of about a yard or two. Put that foot in the ground, a little spin move there. Just get me what you can. They're not all going to be perfect. They're not all going to be eight yarders, ten yarders. Get me what you can. Get me positive yardage. They're going to run it again. This is Gibbs. He's forced backward after getting three up past the 45 to the 46 yard line. Barry Smith, the sophomore on the tackle. Now it's third down. 
Gary Smith's had a big day there in the middle. 320 pound sophomore. Good looking kid out of Shelbyville Central in Tennessee. Third down and medium now. Two of seven on third down, 0 for their last five. This over the middle and that ball hits the turf. Incomplete at the 45 yard line. Kalani Norris, the intended receiver. Shaka Hayward defensively. 0 for their last six on third down, Georgia Tech. Uh, good pocket protection for Jeff Sims and an even better play defensively. Just reading those eyes, letting them hook up right in front of you. Had the ball been completed, it would have been a first down. Shaka Hayward doing a good job making sure he timed it up right. Wasn't too early, batting it away. Be careful of a fake punt here at midfield type situations. Shanahan, Boylan, 11-yard line. To about the 24, 43 yards on the punt, and the return by Boylan, eight yards, Duke football. In America, the is Viviro produced with slave labor? The Blue Devil defense, and guys, he navigates both football and Ooh. wrestling. Here he is doing the splits. Are you kidding me? Talk about an athlete. I said, Ben, do you ever give your body a rest? And he said, honestly, I'm putting the miles on my joints. He takes a lot of ice baths, does a lot of stretching, because he goes straight from football right into wrestling. There is no easing your way into that one. James. Yeah, nothing easy about How about that picture? I mean, that's impressive, the big man. That's, that's like Hans and Franz used to say, Tom, flexibility. <laughs> big man, 260-pounder about. And, and he's so proud of, of his wrestling roots back in Ohio. High school wrestling is so big back there, and especially this high school where they built it. Uh, Dublin Kaufman, he and uh, Don Dennis, the uh, a great wrestler at OU now. He just hope I got that name right. Wrestling fans would be mad at me, but a senior at OU, he's extremely proud of, of being a wrestler and proud to be on this football team. And he, he told us, Abby, that the real conditioning starts towards the end of this year because he's never in good enough shape for those wrestlers. Let's see what kind of shape his offense can be in after this third down and long after a couple nice stops by the Yellow Jackets on Duke. Four for ten on third down for Duke. Holmberg floats it out to the left, open man, Marwini, first down, up near the 35 for Duke. Holmberg with a little touch on that one. They'll mark him up by the 37-yard line, and they got 12. There is a Georgia Tech player down. That's number 25, Charlie Thomas. So we'll take a timeout as Duke gets the first down, 11.50 to go in the third. Zone. By Direct TV Stream, get your TV together. And by Synovus, the proud sponsor of whatever inspires you. A misty, soggy Saturday in Durham, North Carolina for the 89th all-time meeting between Georgia Tech and Duke with 11.50 to go in our third quarter. Blue Devils have a passing and rushing TD in this game. Mateo Durant took it in. Went up over the top, and a 37-yard TD pass as well. And what's the saying? It's, it's a good day for Ducks or a good day for Dukes? How's that go? Dukes? Okay. Well, we'll, we'll see. The yeah. jury's still yeah. out. Okay. A couple of TDs. There's your TD drives. But then the missed field goal at the end of the half could have tied this game. That from Charlie Hammond, 42 yards away. Yeah. And then that fourth down play, remember James there, they were deep in Georgia Tech territory and the Yellow Jackets turned them back on fourth and short when Holmberg tried to tuck it and take it for the necessary yard and came up short. Well, and making drive number nine interesting, Gunnar Holmberg and Jake Marweedy, what an excellent pass over to his tight end with the blitzer in his face right before we went to break to move those chains on a third and long. This is Durant's second effort. Shoulders down in the square and past the 45-yard line. That's enough for a first down to the 46, Mateo Durant. Just chipping away, chipping away. That's what Mateo Durant does best. In the first half, he had 24 carries for 83 yards. So we've got a... That's Monk that's injured, the right guard. Also want to tell you that Charlie Thomas was able to get up and walk off the field as well prior to the break. And there's Jacob Monk doing the same. And that's good 
Good news for number 63, the junior from Clayton, North Carolina. Monk made his 29th start here today, and good to see him jog it off the field. Last few steps, so Durant doing some heavy-duty lifting there on the end of that run. Adding on to his 83 yards there from the first half, and fresh set of downs here for the Dukies. So 93 yards in total right now for Mateo Durant, and a touchdown run, his ninth of the season. Second in the conference in touchdown runs. They'll fake it to Durant. Holmberg has an open man. That is Calhoun at the 30, fighting his way to the 25, and that turn back. So they'll mark him near the 25-yard line. 29 yards on the play. Holmberg and the receiver, Calhoun, was wide open, James. Georgia Tech last weekend, unable to get a lot of pressure on Kenny Pickett, and this is the type of day that the Pitt quarterback then had. They've got to make sure they put pressure on Gunnar Holmberg and not make it too easy on him. Anytime you have a chance to, to pump fake and get some double moves mixed in there, it can be dangerous for a defense. And here's another yellow jacket down on the ground. Jared Ivey is the injured player for Georgia Tech. We'll update his status when we return. This is ACC football from Durham, North Carolina. When your family gathers around a shakaroni from Pop Product not yet rated. Is brought to you by CPI Security. CPI Home Security that protects what matters most. By the Works Landroid Robotic Lawnmower. Available at MyLandroid.com. And by Midas. For tires, brakes, oil, everything. Request your appointment at Midas.com today. Grizzly wet day in Durham, 17-14, third quarter, 10-39 to go. In a rivalry that goes all the way back to 1933 and has been played every year since. Checking on number 15, Jared Ivey, up and walking on that sideline for Georgia Tech. Good sign for Ivey. Freshman from Suwannee, Georgia. A lot of these injuries, they, they've treated them, you know, we're way up here, but the light cramps. They've gone in and intended to the, the calf area, flexing those toes back, and it looked to be more of the same for Ivy. Let's hope that's the case. Georgia Tech team with a bye coming up next week. And good timing on that as they're trying to get healthy, especially on the offensive line. Here we go. Second down into the 20-yard line, couple of yards. Mateo Durant, who went over 2,000 in his career with his efforts so far today. He's closing in on 100 yards rushing. And now quickly third down. From the edge of the red zone for Duke. Five of 11 on third down in the game. Third and four, eighth play of the drive. Got a pistol look offensively. Durant. Dragged down near the 17. Needed to get to about the 16 and a half for the first down. Ely makes the tackle for Georgia Tech. Durant with yet another carry. Here comes Hand back out there. Give him a chance to... A little redemption after the miss right before halftime. So on fourth and very short, Duke runs the field goal unit out there. 35-yard attempt, Charlie Ham Missed in the closing seconds of the second quarter from 42 yards away. He's now five of eight on the season, looking for field goal number six, and he makes it. Five yarder is good and most importantly for him and David Cutcliffe he has tied the ball game at 17 with the field goal. Like that. Give him another chance. How many times do you see offensively? You, you'll see a, a guy drop a ball and offensive coordinator will call a play, put it right back in his hands, give him a chance to redeem himself, get a little feel good going back in himself and his teammates and the trust. And they do just that here on the special teams front. Don't always have a chance to get him right back out there. But 
That's, that's big for a game that's so tight like this. It may come down to one more of those by a Charlie Ham or over on the other side of the ball for Georgia Tech at Samaglia. And during that drive, Mateo Durant went over 100 yards in the game, officially now has 101 yards rushing on 29 carries. And that ties his career high, which he set in the first game of the season at Charlotte when Durant ran for 255 yards, a school record. Gibbs will watch it sail through the end zone. So we're all tied up at 17. Total yards for each team. Georgia Tech has 268. Duke has 253. It is that close statistically, and it's even at 17. On the scoreboard, Georgia Tech with the football. And momentum right now really on the side of these Duke Blue Devils offensively after starting the game on fire. Jeff Sims in this offense with so many weapons, they haven't done a whole heck of a lot. I think this is a pretty important drive right here for Georgia Tech. Try to get that momentum back on the side of the guys from the 404. Let's see what Jeff Sims and company can do. Sims is 6 of 16, 161 yards. Has to get out of the pocket, spins away from the tackler, keeps his footing, and then goes down near the 35. Pocket was started to crumble. Sims got out of dodge for nine yards. Yeah, made a couple guy, made a couple guys miss. Rather, I mean, just right there, they've got him. That's what they talk about, making a guy miss in the phone in a phone booth. I remember a couple phone booths that he hopped out of Superman right there. What's a phone booth? Well, I mean, you're, you're, yeah. well you see, before <laughs> they had these cell phones. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. No emojis sent from there either. Sim still has it on the fake. Up the middle of the field and slides down near the 42. Nate Thompson with the tackle. Eight yards for Sims. Sims had a couple of passing TDs, but did throw two interceptions in the loss at home last Saturday against Pitt, 52-21. Georgia Tech rolled up 432 yards of total offense in that game. That's Gibbs, and there's no game. Ball's at the 42-yard line. Steady drizzle throughout the day. Tom Wormy, James Bates, Abby LaBar on the sidelines, our outstanding ACC football production crew with you from Durham, North Carolina, and Wallace Wade Stadium. Home of Duke football since 1929. Gibbs, another roadblock, maybe a yard. Now see in there in the mix defensively. This front seven. For the Duke Blue Devils, they've been physical up front. They've done a good job of handling their blockers, stoning that big offensive line, and shutting down the run game, making it a, a one-dimensional offense, helping themselves out to a third down and long. Three guys down and one walked up. Let's see how many they bring here. Oh, for their last six on third down. Sims, those edges were bending. He hits his man, Malachi Carter. Drags a couple of Blue Devils to the 20-yard line. Sims standing tall and delivering to Malachi Carter. Malachi Carter is 6'3", 195. They've got bodies on him, but not only is he fast, but he's physical. So you can put a hand out there, try to slow him up, and it's not going to happen. And it's a nice big target for his freshman quarterback, Jeff Sims, to get right back on track, slinging that football around. Big-time completion to move those chains and on into the red zone. 25 yards on the second catch of the game for Carter. Sim wants to, Sims wants to throw it again to the end zone. Back corner and a score. McGowan ran under it for the touchdown for Georgia Tech. 18 yards into the end zone for the Yellow Jackets. Tom, a defense that's put a lot of eggs into that stopping the run, shutting it down. And they, they've got to respect that play pass, setting up shops with the protection. And how about this beautifully thrown touch pass, making sure he's got control. Absolutely. Jeff Sims to Kyrick McGowan, who missed last week. Injured the transfer from Northwestern back home in Georgia. The Dalton, Georgia product with a beautiful catch. 
after a perfectly thrown football. Fourth TD catch of the season for Kyrick McGowan in that back corner of the end zone from Sims. And just manned up across the front there and, and the safety just trailing the entire time. Nate Thompson was beat on the route. You know, and that's why it's nice. Just, just got control right before he, he hit that boundary line, it looked like. That's why it's nice to run those, those routes to the corner from further inside. That inside man in that situation, that slot in McGowan's case, because it gives you some padding. How many times do we see the outside receiver trying to run a fade and they just run out of real estate? Plenty of room there to leave his guy and for his quarterback to leave it there hanging for him. And that's just what Georgia Tech needed to get some of that mighty momentum back on their side. And a seven-point lead once again. Three for three in the red zone of the game for Georgia Tech with a couple of TDs and a field goal. Second passing TD for Sims, 77 yards in the first quarter. And now the 18-yarder in the third to his receiver, Kyrick McGowan. Stinson. Puts on the brakes and spins at the 20. Long run down that 20-yard line for Stinson to get about four more yards out near the 24 or 5. So 13 yards on the return for Stinson. Certainly ran much longer than that as he went the width of the field to turn it around that corner. So Mateo Durant, once again, for this Duke offense, has gone over 100 yards. 101 for Durant. Not part of this first down play. Coleman gets the carry. Durant, a spectator for the moment. There you see five times this season over 100 yards highlighted by the 255 against charlotte nine career games over 100 yards jordan dominic by the way hats off on that last play to shut down the runner but there goes bobo nice little pitch and catch from holmberg to bobo to move those chains and he's been asked to do so holmberg's been putting it on the money here Last play was 11 yards to Bobo, who has a TD grab in this game. First quarter, 37 yards from Holmberg. Gunner now 11 of 12. He's up to 139 yards passing in that one TD to Bobo. Coleman stays in as the back. Holmberg has it, gets rid of it. Robertson. Crosses midfield for the first down for Duke into Georgia Tech real estate. And 17 yards on the play as Miles Sims made the sideline tackle. Good looking little play here by Jeff Ferris, the offensive coordinator, the option to run that football, something that Gunnar Holmberg does an excellent job of, pulling those defenders up. And option to toss it down the field and move those chains. So tough to defend when you've got a guy that can do Run it and throw it, as we've seen on both sides of the ball. Holmberg, deep ball down near the 10-yard line, but incomplete looking for Bobo. Zamari Walton back there for Georgia Tech. That TD pass by Holmberg to Bobo in the first quarter. This is fifth TD pass of the season. They'll go Coleman again inside the 45 as he dives on down. Got about a yard. Georgia Tech player is down. That's Jan Juin. 32, Sylvain Jan Juin, sophomore from Belgium. So they're taking a look at Jan Juin near midfield. He was part of that tackle. Georgia Tech, they, they like to keep it light on Friday nights. Players gather. 
spirited games of ping pong, some arm wrestling, all kinds of stuff. Yan Juin sports a pretty strong ping pong table tennis game, James, against yeah. Keon White. Oh yeah, look at that. They so they must. I guess they travel the ping pong tables. Oh yeah. 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 Bring it with them, and Coach Collins telling us that, that <laughs> snacks sometimes the ping pong battles get bloody on a Friday night. That's, uh, that's rough. Yeah. Good to see Yan Juin to the sideline, walking under his own power. Hey, I can confirm they do bring the ping pong tables with them. Wow. <laughs> that's, the, that's, that's dedication right there, Abby. And, yeah. You know, that's a... Uh, we were invited but unable to attend last night, so uh, thank you for the invite. Maybe we'll uh, take a rain check because uh, I'd like to see that. But I, I, I like, too, as, as a player, keeping it light. Let's see if they can keep this offense off the field here on third down. Uh-oh, that flag's coming out. This one's going to be a freebie. Looked like Dominic got, Dominic got a piece of the face mask of Holmberg. Face mask, defense number 42. 15-yard penalty, stamp. There's Jordan Dominic, who's uh, just trying to make something happen, and again, grabbing the <laughs> wrong piece of the uniform and costing the team as he was rushing upfield. Holmberg came down underneath, and he's, he's limping a little bit. Jordan Moore is a freshman quarterback that's taken quite a few snaps in the Wildcat situation but not so much in the emergency type situation. The speedy freshman here, Jordan Moore. Very bright future for him. Moore takes off, tries to run with it, and is rudely greeted at the 30 and driven back. Mike Lockhart is number 94. Kyle Kennard as well. And Moore says, I've had enough of this, and he comes to the sidelines. <laughs> Big Lockhart smoking in there. Lockhart, Texas, that's like the barbecue mecca there in Central Texas. That's a, that's a fitting name for a big man, big brisket. Holmberg's right back in. It's Bobo, nifty little move, down to about the 17-yard line. That is a Duke first down. Harris had to make the tackle for Georgia Tech. Well, Goldberg, uh, Goldberg rather takes one play off and comes right back in, slinging it around and quickly over the ball to snap this one as they move those chains inside the red zone. Out on the edge near the 15, John Tavis Robertson, the sophomore from Gray, Georgia, three yards. So Duke now in the CPI security red zone. Two for four in red zone production for the game. Came in as the fifth best offense in the red zone of the ACC. Got a couple with Durant. Guess he was just getting a breather with those Coleman plays. Had we done the broadcast last week, Duke didn't make it into the red zone, so Duke may have had to pay CPI a little extra money. They, they didn't earn their money. Didn't get anything out of it. They're getting in there a little bit this week. Let's see if they can finish. Finish in a third down and six. At the 10, that pass was late arriving. Jarred loose and incomplete. And that was Durant, the intended receiver. Well, and this is exactly what the quarterback guru, Coach David Cutcliffe, has been working with his guy, getting it out there, getting the ball out there earlier. And so he can lead those receivers, lead those backs. And, and, he, and he stood up and he talked to us about the, the how it is the core, that, that quick release, that quick trigger. There's a perfect example. You had a guy, you're going to give him a chance, but you threw it behind him. And so the pass is broken up. So here comes Ham one more time, try to make it a four-point game. It's a 31-yard attempt for Ham. That is no good. It's a second miss on the afternoon for him. He had made a 35-yarder to tie the game at 17, but this one is a miss from the sophomore. Take another look at it. Well, that's a, that's a tough miss in this tight game. Snap and hold are okay. And He's missed the two field goals and was bailed out on an extra point there in the first half by Georgia Tech being off sides. He, he had missed an extra point attempt. So now that'll have to 
beyond the minds of David Cutcliffe and his coaching staff as we near the fourth quarter in this tight football game. But that's an opportunity to finish with three points, but you get nothing out of it after a hard-fought drive. And it's right back into the hands. A hot hand right now, Jeff Sims in the Jackets. 11 plays on that drive for Duke. Unable to harvest points, and Jordan Mason runs with it for Georgia Tech for five yards on first down. Michael Reese on the tackle. Don't forget, coming up, it's the fourth, presented by CPI Security. You want to stay tuned for the fourth, our Durham, North Carolina edition for the 89th all-time meeting between Georgia Tech and Duke. When Georgia Tech won last year in Atlanta. Trying to win here for the first time since 2013 as Mason stumbles shy of the 30 and he got four. It's 55 back there. Franklin. A defensive tackle and nice drop. Sims has it. And he was tackled by Lummy Young. Aggressive play from Young defending. Back to back plays. Good job by the whole defensive front standing their guys up and then in the open field. So tough to bring down anyone, especially a guy like Jeff Sims. So much wiggle to him. Lummy Young just pulling that trigger, making up his mind he's going to go make the play, not give him a chance to get his shoulders turned and make a move on him. Forcing a fourth down on a third down and short. What a huge play after the field goal miss. Rary's defense continues to impress here against this offense. Shanahan. Boylan backtracking. Man, he had to backtrack 15 yards, lost the handle, trying to fall on it. Bouncing around near the goal line. It appeared that Duke was able to cover, but that ball might be inside the one yard line. Boylan had to race back at least 15 yards as Shanahan just belted that football. And they will mark it inside the one. Brandon Johnson alertly covering as Boylan lost control. Wow. We've seen two or three already lucky hops for these offenses in the wet game earlier, the ball hitting the ground. This one, Duke, very fortunate not only to get the football back, but not to be looking up at that scoreboard and being down two touchdowns rather than one. And that right there could... Mm, you got to be careful on that, on that diving on, using that helmet, and an excellent job to get down there and get that football by your buddies being around that football. They stop and play, and I wonder if they're going to maybe add a targeting on to them. Watch the end of the play. So this is Johnson right near the goal line. You know, and that plane now, remember, in college, it's the plane. Does that ball ever cross the plane? And you know what? Oh, okay. So now, with the ball crossing the plane, he'll bring it out. Will it not be a touchback here in this situation? Is that, if it crossed the plane, it, it may end up helping. But one thing, now you're holding your breath if you're a yellow jacket, that they don't add on because there was a hit that came in and they're trying to do away with there. A guy hustling down. So the issue here might be the control for Johnson as far as being able to handle that football down inside the one. Right, and it's, it's similar to a reception and being in bounds. They're, they're, it, it looked like he never truly had control of that football, and it looks like they'll move it back out. So, double good. After further review, the receiver did not play. Therefore, the player results in the touchback, first down, 20 yard line. So how about this, Tom? So it had Boylan initially caught the football, <laughs> they, they still would be further back. So you talk about dodging a little bit of a special teams bullet there. That's Kenan Johnson who comes in at the end of the play for Georgia Tech. Got the call, got the call. Yep. 
What hustle regardless by Brandon Johnson to get down there and save the day. I mean, you saw James Boylan had to backtrack at least 15 yards to try to make the play on that after the punt from Shanahan. Shanahan, he's booming it from the Australian Institute of Sport, which is kind of confusing, but we'll get back to it. Middle of the field, Holmberg floats it out near the 45, going up and getting it, Jalen Calhoun. Georgia Tech doesn't think it's a catch. The officials disagree. Swilling was defending at 36 yards. Boy, they needed the big playmaker to come in and make something big, the deep threat, and they'll quickly try to snap this one, make sure they can't take another peek at it, and the tempo doesn't get a whole lot at first. Second and third effort, Durant for the 41-yard line and three yards. How about Calhoun? That ball was up for grabs. That was one-on-one, -on -one and he just wanted it a little bit more. And the Georgia Tech player. Yeah, Calhoun, and he's not the biggest guy out there. Goes 5'11", the former high school quarterback with the big play in the middle of the field. So a, a series of some kooky events following the way of the Duke Blue Devils right now. Yeah, this pass, knocked down. Looking for Harding. And that will be the last play of the third quarter. Miles Sims got a piece of that pass by Holmberg. And we are headed to the fourth. So, Georgia Tech will have the lead 24-17. The fourth is straight ahead. This is the fourth presented by CPI Security. 24-17 in Durham. For Georgia Tech, Mateo Durant, though, has gone over 100 yards rushing in this game for Duke. Well, the senior usually getting it done between the tackle boxes here. He's bounced outside a couple times, but when he gets those shoulders turned north and south, he's very dangerous. That's where it's really time for the big man to eat. And here he goes up and over for a touchdown back in the first half. 6-1, 195-pound senior from Plum Branch, South Carolina. I asked him to tell us all about it yesterday. So, well, pretty much my whole family. It's a small town, but it's full of Mateo Durant's family, and he's, all he wants to do every time he goes out is make that family proud. Well, he's certainly do it, doing it here today as he goes over 2,000 yards in his Duke career. He needed 43 to do it. He did that and then some, but more than anything, you know that 21 and his teammates want to come away with a win trailing by seven points right now. Eighth now in school history and rushing for Durant and the fifth time this year. Over 100 yards rushing, a career high 30 carries for Mateo Durant. But his team has to make up the difference. 24-17 after three quarters, and we thank you for watching the fourth presented by CPI Security. Well, numbers one and two for Georgia Tech, the safeties, guys. Two guys you don't want to see banged up. I know Wanya Thomas has been out there, but he's been coming a lot and getting checked on on the sideline between a lot of the plays. And Tariq, Tom, I'll continue. So Tariq Carpenter, guys, came over to the sideline in a lot of pain. They ended up sitting him down, wrapping up his left finger and his left hand. So I'll keep an eye on that as well. Abby, thank you. Bobo made the catch there for 12 yards. Inside the 30 now on a first down. Little razzle gadget play coming around the edges. Calhoun looking to move at the 25 and then stop near the 22 or 3. It's Jalen Calhoun, the junior from Greenville, South Carolina. Seven yards on the play. Digging deep in the bag of tricks, James. A little yeah. wrinkle. Yeah, haven't seen a lot of that. Look at Holmberg getting down there and getting involved. Oh, that's a 16. I'm having a tough time reading those, those numbers. It's Miles Sims on the tackle. Durant, first down, 15-yard line. Mateo Durant now. Just carrying that football with regularity. Durant up to 32 carries in the game. How about one more? He stumbles down inside the 10. They'll mark him at the 9, 6 yards. Here's an example of, of what Mateo Durant does best. We've seen it a couple times. He, he's hit. He's hit, but he's still going to fall four, five yards. That momentum and that, that low body. He runs, runs with those powering legs. 
and does a great job of keeping that drive in his lower body and falling forward. Just, just positive yardage, positive yardage. A lot of times you'll see a guy get hit and he'll drop it right there. And Mateo Durant just continues to fight to stay up on his feet. And third down and two now after back-to-back -back gains on the ground and a pistol look. Durant behind Holmberg. They give it to him again. Slams into the line. That's his 34th carry of the game. That is one more than Georgia Tech as a team. However, coming up short on third down, and it's fourth down. And here's a little bit of meat on this bone, and we've seen shorter tries, shorter yardage to go, where they've elected to kick up after the miss, the second miss of the day by his field goal kicker. Cut Cliff on fourth down. Holmberg still has it. He throws it near the goal line and in for the touchdown. Seven yards on the play. There's Damelin, the tight end lined up, offset in the backfield. And how's that for hitting him on the run? Nice little play call by Jeff Ferris, the offensive coordinator. Nobody there for Damelin coming out of the backfield. Quarterback leads him right into the end zone, and we are tied. Just his sixth catch of the season and first for a touchdown. Duke on fourth down, gets it to the end zone, James. Holmberg throws the TD pass, and so we're tied at 24. Before we talk about tackle. Product not. Part of the drive, brought to you by Land Rover to tie this game, James. Uh, and what an important drive it was here in the fourth quarter. The deep threat, Calhoun getting involved. There's Bobo, Jake Bobo had his first touchdown catch of the season earlier today. And Del Mullen, get Nicky into the end zone to tie it up at 24. 12.33 left to play. We promised you a good second half, and back and forth we go. And remember how that drive started. Duke would have been inside its own one yard line, but it was recovered in the end zone for the touchback. So the drive officially 80 yards, 10 plays, and three minutes and 17 seconds. So they benefited from the play near the goal line where the ball broke the plane, ruled the touchback, and the subsequent 80 yard drive. Second TD pass for Holmberg. No return from Gibbs. It's a seven-yard TD play to tie this game at 24. It's a bold maneuver by David Cutcliffe to go for it on fourth and short for the score instead of trying to field goal. And you wonder, maybe the two misses by oh, him influencing that decision? Without a doubt, because think of the earlier, you know, it's fourth and one. And, and from further away, he chooses to try the field goal, the, the miss right before halftime. So... Yeah, I, I would guess so, very much so, and, and paying off for him right there. Defensively, they've got to keep him in front. Don't give up the big explosive. Sims too far for the receiver. Alani Norris, sophomore from Miami, Florida, couldn't catch up with that one. Josh Blackwell back in coverage of the graduate student. Man, what a football game. 17-14 at halftime. Duke missed the chance to tie it up with a late field goal. 14-0 to start the game. As Georgia Tech scored on its first two possessions. One of them was a 77-yard TD pass. The longest play of the season for the Jackets. That's Dante Smith absorbing contact. Continuing the run, seven yards. Dwayne Carter tackle for Duke. Well, you hear somebody on the sideline there for Duke where they say, got to wrap up, and that's exactly what you got to do right here because Dante Smith will keep on scooting. Lummy Young, he knows better than that, the senior. He comes in there, does an excellent job of reading what they're trying to do, comes down and fills. He's right there to make the play, but you got to wrap up. You got to bring it all, and what you got now on third down, just three of ten. They started with the big... Two th uh, third down conversions in the first half. It's been an adventure since then on third down. 
It's been an issue all season. 13th in the conference on third down, and this one is going to come up short. Jordan Mason tried as hard as he could. Second effort, but they'll only mark him up near the 32 or 3. Needed to obtain the 35-yard line. Penetration. Penetration. The defensive front. Peebles and company. They've been working hard there in the trenches against this offensive line for Georgia Tech. What a big play on third down to force this punting unit on. Second consecutive three and out by the Georgia Tech offense. Here's Boylan. Remember, he had trouble with the last punt from Shanahan. With the bobble, it was a 71-yard punt all the way back to the one-yard line, but it was a touchback ultimately. At the 15, Boylan wraps that one up after the 53-yard punt from Shanahan. Duke has the football. They just tied the game moments ago. 24 all. ACC football from Durham. Product not yet rated. For all jackets and devils, and Abby has more on that head coach quarterback relationship on the Duke sideline. Well, Bates, you mentioned it earlier, the life lessons that Coach Cutcliffe instills in his players. And so, of course, I asked Gunnar Holmberg, what is the best piece of advice Coach Cut has given you? And he said, really, it's just to be myself. As a quarterback, there's a lot of pressures around you. There's this pressure to be vocal. But if you're not vocal, don't be vocal. Just do what you do best and stay consistent with that emotion. And we can see that Gunnar has stayed consistent throughout this game, despite the ups and downs for his offense, guys. And J Daniel Jones, a player that he talks to, every day his former quarterback here current quarterback for the Giants is the same person that got that advice of just being yourself and he says Daniel does an awesome job at that and we talk about it every day wow isn't that special to be able to talk to a great one like that that knows exactly what he's going through and, and you know, we saw many times coming here to Durham coach David Cutcliffe coaching Daniel Jones hard and hard work and, and hard coaching pays off and life lessons and as you mentioned Abby will <laughs> be able to carry those forever long after football Holmberg threw it pressure was coming right in his grill looking for Marweedy Ely was the player chasing down Holmberg as he released that pass we'll play pass and putting Holmberg on the run Ely in there a nice little love tap let him know he's there and he'll be coming back next time he rolls out that way Durant, 20-yard line, escaping the first hit and up to the 25. Second effort, Durant, nine yards. Quez Jackson on the tackle for Georgia Tech. Yeah, pat on the back there to Bobo. Watch Bobo. It's going to be on the right side of your screen. There you see him blocking Sims. He negates his defender. It's third down and short. Again, they go with this pistol look. Lined up right behind Holmberg. 36 carries, 129 yards. Here's carry number 37. He just never stops out past the 30-yard line. Ely had to make the tackle six yards. Mateo Durant, the senior for Duke, 6'1", 195. And he'll go to the sideline for a quick breather. Del Mullen in there as well, coming across to help lead the way. Got to snap it. They missed one earlier. They allowed Georgia Tech to get back across. This time is just too far gone. Helping him out a little bit. Kyle Kennard, 31 on that edge. A little jumpy on that line. Fifth penalty for 34 yards against Georgia Tech. Holmberg unloads it, going up to get it near the 45-yard line, and it's Jake Bobo. Elevation, reception, and he beat Miles Sims. Yes, sir. Watch this. Good ball up there high. Has to go up and pluck it, watch it in, control it. The control is there, got the foot down, and knew he was going to take a big lick. Big time throw and a big time catch by Bobo. Bobo's having quite a day here today. 19 yards on that catch by Jake Bobo, who has a touchdown reception in the first quarter of 37 yards. Bobo has four catches on the day. Jordan Waters lost a yard on that previous play. Second and 11 
Waters again. Broke a tackle. Couldn't get to the 40. 41 yard line for Waters. And rocked out of bounds. Ely, that's 11 tackles for Ely. Sideline to sideline. Changing things up. Get all those talented linebackers. Personnel wise, moving to a 3 3 5 look. Walking some guys up here in these gaps. It can make things confusing on blocking for that offensive line. Here's a third and long now. 7 of 16 on third down. This is Holmberg inside the 35-yard line. This looked really, really close. Needed to get to the 34 or so. Seven yards. Jalen King on the tackle. You see Durant back in there. This time he'll lead the way. Also leading the way, that big offensive line, Maurice McIntyre. And they will give it to him, Tom. A first down. The chains will move as they go inside the 35-yard line. No need to bring out the chains in this instance, James. Or the lasers. Yeah. Well, wait a second. Hold the phone. <laughs> Hold the pay phone. <laughs> Hold the phone booth. In the phone booth. In the phone booth. I have no now, now, remember. Remember that spot, James, back in the first half where Duke went for it on fourth down. The drama continues here in Durham. 8.06 to go in our fourth quarter. Four cup holders for all the... It's weaning away from home. It Jeff Flanagan has just informed us the ball carrier was short of the line to gain as they have spotted it just inside the 35 of Georgia Tech. They moved this football back about six inches, didn't they? I mean, I don't think they moved it back a foot. I, they definitely didn't move it back a yard. So, how important is this now? Georgia Tech has helped out a little bit by jumping off sides. Alert. Be careful, Georgia Tech. Do not jump and give it to them the easy way. Probably going to see a pistol look here. That's exactly what you've got. Fourth down and short. Big play. Duke is one for two on fourth down. They'll go up the middle, Durant, and he gets the necessary yardage, 31-yard line. The last fourth down they converted was the TD pass to Del Molin of seven yards. Losing all four, and for the most part, 95% of that offensive line just blowing Georgia Tech off of the ball. Overpowering Georgia Tech on that play. Holmberg. Sends it down inside the 10, one-handed grab attempt, flag is out. Eli Pankle tried to make the catch, Trey Swilling back there with him and a flag came out. Pass interference, defense, number three, 15-yard penalty, first down. Trey Swilling has played too much football. He's, look at him. He's right in the hip pocket. He's there. Snap that head around. Oh, I see he did snap the head around, but he had those hands all over it. And that's where you got to have your guys, one of those tricks of the trade, have them wear those dark gloves. White gloves standing out on that dark jersey. That's easy to see. Give them some dark gloves, and maybe they blend in a little bit. Helping out the Blue Devils, though, as they continue to march. Durant lost that ball. It appeared at the tail end of the play. Some feisty play after the whistle as well. It was Durant on the carry. Durant's 38th carry of the game. And it appears that Duke will maintain possession. Good job by Charlie Thomas on the chase. Come from the backside and flatten out. Take that proper angle, flatten it out, make the play, almost jar the ball loose. What a big turnover that would have been. And instead, it's just a three-yard loss for Duke. Marwidi fell on that one. Jordan Waters, number seven. Trying to inch his way to the 15-yard line. Three yards on the carry for Waters. Just to clarify, I don't think they called that last one a fumble even. I think they, they ruled him down. So here's third down and 10. They can get a first down there, you see, at the six-yard line. A shot of Hanover on the sidelines. He's hit one, but he's missed two field goal tries here today. 11th play of the drive. Holmberg inside the five, and that's on the money. Caught by Calhoun. That is a first down. First and goal, Duke of the catch by Calhoun. 12 yards. 
Well, Calhoun been a little bit more quiet than he was against North Carolina, but stepping up when they need him the most. And how about that conversion and quick to the ball, but going the wrong way. That was Waters on the carry as they moved quickly. He lost three. Jalen King, number 14 on the play, Georgia Tech. Three for five in the red zone of the game for Duke. Trying to get those go-ahead points tied at 24. Durant crashes down to the five-yard line. Ivy on the stop. Boy, just to see, see the blood there on the elbow of Durant. Just earning everything he gets. And that offensive line just eating up those defenders. Moved it up to a third and goal now from the five. Holmberg rolls that pocket, throws to the end zone, and he was looking for Calhoun. Couldn't get to that one. He brought that pressure. Can you tell? Look, Ely, Ace Ely with the pressure. Otherwise, that's a touchdown. There, there's nobody around the receiver in the end zone. So here we go. Georgia Tech stands down low, forces a field goal try. So one for three. This is a 22-yarder. The make was from 35 yards away for him. 22 yards away to give Duke its first lead of the ball game. Charlie Ham blasts it through. The 22-yarder and the Blue Devils have the lead in the fourth. Just over five minutes to go from Wallace Wade Stadium. Imagine being connected to and securing... Product not yet rated. Worth a watch. As the Blue Devils are trying to win their fourth in a row in Durham against Georgia Tech in the drizzle at Wallace Wade Stadium. And that touchdown right there tied the game at 24. Charlie Ham just hit a 22-yarder, his second made field goal of the game. 27-24, first lead of the game for Duke and the longest scoring drive of the season for the Blue Devils. It took five minutes, 52 seconds, 15 plays, 80 yards, and the Ham 22-yarder. And Duke leads it 27-24, 5.06 to go in the ball game, James. Well, can Jeff Collins' offense run the football a little bit? They've got plenty of time, obviously, to march down the field at three timeouts left. Can they get a little something going on the ground where they haven't had much success here as of late? Let Jeff Sims really let him set up that play action pass. We can get them rolling, rolling them out on the run on some boots really buy time and give him a two-way go where he can tuck it and run. One thing he was doing so well early in the game that those receivers have a chance to get open. That Duke defense has been locking it down here lately. Gibbs. Gibbs knocked to the turf short of the 25-yard line. Fisher Smith on the tackle, 13 yards of the on the return for Gibbs. And 15 plays, the longest scoring drive of the season for Duke. Both these, these teams, their cover teams on, on specials have been fantastic, good hustle. And, and that's when you know that you're watching a, a well-coached football team, a, a, a team that understands, hey, this is my chance to get out there and contribute. This is my chance. I may not be a starter right now, but I'm going to get out there. I'm going to. This is this is how I help my football team, and they compete to get on those special teams. Coach Cutcliffe, Coach Jeff Collins as well. They've got them hustling down, covering every kick so far today for both of these teams. Gibbs up to the 28-yard line. 
Three on first down for Gibbs. So we go inside of five minutes to go in regulation, James. And one thing, Tom, that shows right there and that is shown throughout the day is, is the patience and the discipline of this defense. Gibbs is, is trying to be patient and let that flow go by so he can cut it back and hit a big one. But these guys are, are respecting their assignments. They're playing within the defense. Sims bought a little bit of time, and it's too high for the receiver. Near midfield, Billy Ward put the right hand up, could not come down with it. Nate Thompson back there. Oh, and Nate Thompson and the Devils are lucky. Nobody between Billy and the goal line. And Jeff Sims knows it. Look at that shot. Ah, hands to the hat. What could have been, would have been, is now a third down and seven. One of their last eight on third down for Georgia Tech. Third and seven and trailing by three. Late in the fourth. Sims pressured. Edges Ben. Sims is going down. Shaka Hayward. The first sack of the game for two. Rolling the dice, Matt Guerreri. He brings five. You bring five and you miss. Jeff Sims is going to tuck it if he can get past that first wave and make you pay. But again, discipline. Guys staying in those rush lanes. And Shaka Hayward ditching his offensive lineman and coming down and grabbing Jeff Sims to drop him. What a big play by the linebacker, the junior, Shaka Hayward. Penalty markers before the punt. Third straight three and out, Georgia Tech. Ball start. Offense number 24. Five yard penalty, a full out. Tom, if you think Mateo Durant's been important to this Duke football team so far today, so far this season, <laughs> here's where they're really hoping to lean on him. Just chew away at this clock and get him some first downs when they get this ball back. Boylan watches it bounce near the 45. Bit Touch it. Got it. See, as, as, a, as getting down there on kick team, that's two seconds. That ball is not going anywhere. Grab it now. The clock will stop. That's two, three ticks off the clock, and it could add up for Georgia Tech. Holmberg and the Duke offense onto the field for the 42-yard line. Good field position. There's running back Mateo Durant, 39 carries, 137 yards, above 100 yards for the fifth time this season. Earlier in the game, crossed the 2,000-yard mark for his career. Now Holmberg, 19 of 25 and 258 yards, couple of TD passes. And the one to tie the game was to Dom Mullen in the fourth, a seven-yard TD pass. 40 carries. Jeff Collins watching Mateo Durant carry that rock. Eight yards, previous play. It's gut check time for that defense in the front seven. They're tired. The offensive line there, I don't know if you saw it in the shot, giving each other high fives after because they won. They won first down. They're going to let this clock tick all the way down before they snap it. Defensively, who's, who's going to step up and make a play? They, they played hard defensively, both sides of the ball, but now's the time. You're going to have to dig down deep and shut down Mateo Durant. That's a first down for Duke of the run for Durant. Both teams with three timeouts. So Georgia Tech electing not to use any timeouts yet, James. Well, here's where, here's where you're going to have to start using it because this clock, they keep chipping away at it like this. Mateo Durant's going to have to just hold on to the football. First and foremost, secure that football, make them use those timeouts as we get down near two minutes, but expect him to bang one out right here. Durant. 42-yard line. 42 carries for Durant. Timeout Georgia Tech. Five yards previous play. Remember, early in this game, it was 14-0. Duke trailed 17-14 at halftime. Georgia Tech has not scored in the fourth. A TD and a field goal. 
for Duke in this fourth quarter. Time for Fresh Market to discover the best. We go side by side. Sims and Holberg today. Yeah, they gunslingers. No pun intended. Gunner Holberg. But they about the 19th for 25 day for the Duke Blue Devil and Jeff Sims. Where he was flashing early. A couple big third down passes and putting them on the fly. Will he get another chance? Get his hands on the football. Try to drive his team back down there and tie this one up or win it. Defensively, they've got to get a stop. They got to throw a flag there. There, they threw it. That's, that was a big time hold. Big time hold on Jordan Dominic being held on the edge there. And that, that gave him the corner so easily. And this will go back the other way and stop the clock. Hold on the offense. I'd like to think I don't cheer for anybody, but I, I so the defensively, if a guy's getting old, I try. I just know how frustrating that can be. You're in position, and you got a guy that's just wrapped around you. I was going to be a little bit frustrated. Holding offense number 88. It's a 10-yard penalty. First down. The clock will start on the snap. It's on Marweedy. There it is. Second down. No, it wasn't on Marweedy. It was actually on 62 is who it's going to be on. They, Marweedy was over there, but that wasn't on. The, the call was actually on Graham Barton. 62. Marweedy was the announced player. It is second down. Second and 15. Holmberg gets popped at the 47-yard line. There is no gain. And now we're inside of two minutes to go, and the clock is stopping with 140, 159 rather to go. Second timeout for Georgia Tech. So with 159 to go on the fourth, before we continue, a message from Works Landroid. Works Landroid Robotic Lawnmower. Available at mylandroid.com. The future of lawn care is here. Tom, look how that penalty changed this football game. Georgia, Georgia Tech was unable to put up a fight there in the middle against Mateo Durant. He, he was getting five yards every snap, and, and it just seemed like it was going to keep going that way. They get, they get a holding penalty and go back the other way, and the tide turns, and a big lick on Gunnar Holmberg by this uh, defensive front. And now you're looking at a third down and long that you've got to be careful. You don't want to turn the football over. Gives them a chance to get back in it. Look at this. 43rd carry, most in school history, but that goes nowhere. Jared Ivey with the tackle. And Georgia Tech has taken its final timeout to stop the clock with 1.53 to go and it's fourth down. I mean, the way that, the way that drive was going, they were, they were cranking up the buses. They, they were getting ready to, to head back to Atlanta, feeling sorry for themselves. And then, boom, just like that, the momentum turns, not just with the penalty, but with the big lick by the defense who decided to flip that switch and come back to life up front and shut somebody down. And look at this. Just under two minutes to go. Watch out. Georgia Tech has been a pretty strong second half team. 79 points this season in the second half. Just seven today for the Yellow Jackets. Ray. Bouncing. Now Duke, let it roll. Let yeah. it roll for four more seconds. Let make them blow the whistle. There you go. 41 yards on the punt. Ball near the 12. Sims through the 18-yard TD pass in the third quarter to Kyrick McGowan. And that's the only scoring for Georgia Tech. In fact, they only have seven yards in their last three drives. All three and out for Georgia Tech. Can't afford that here, James. 142 on the clock and trailing by three to Duke. Zero timeouts remaining. For the guys from the 404, trailing by three. Four receiver set. Sims pressured, just dumps it off. 
Got it to Gibbs. The ball comes bounding out near the 20. It's a fight for it over near the sideline, and it goes out of bounds at about the 21-yard line. Wow. Watch Dwayne Carter. Dwayne Carter right in the middle of your screen fighting to get up there. He's going to turn and burn, and he's going to run down. Gibbs strip that football away and <laughs> make it pretty interesting. Look at him fight Georgia Tech. This, this ball has fallen the way so many times of those that fumbled it here today. About four or five times it's gone right back to the offense. And here's one of those opportunities for Georgia Tech. A little bit of life left, but got scary there for a second. Sims with the time. Has to run, angling for the sideline, and he goes out at the 23. And that's first down yardage for Sims. He got nine on the run. Stevens steered him out of bounds. You know, you've got guys, the wide receivers, like McGowan, like Carter, McCollum, some, some pretty speedy guys out there, and it's a secondary that's doing a good job and hanging with them and forcing Sims to tuck that ball and get something. 1.17 on the clock, down the sideline. Sims the pass and caught near the 42-yard line. Adonica Sanders. And they'll mark him at the 40, James, 37 yards. Time for Sims. Nice route by Sanders and a beautiful throw. Secures it and brings it in. They're over the ball, ready to snap. And a timeout called by the Blue Devils, their first of three. Dude, first charge timeout. First catch of the game for Adonicus Sanders. The junior from North Charleston, South Carolina, running under that one. Bottom of your screen, just man to man, and just runs right by him. You, you, you got to try to get a little, little shove on him and try to break their stride. And at the very least, turn and go. If I'm even, I'm leaving. Is the same. You, 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 that when that cushion breaks down as a defensive back, you're done. You, you got to you got to turn those hips and get out of there before those speedsters get by you. And a, and a great throw by Jeff Sims. It hasn't been the smoothest of second halves. It was tough there later in the first half. But one thing that Jeff Collins and Dave Patton, the offensive coordinator, say about their quarterback, he hasn't hung his head. He's gotten right back in there. And here's a look at the transfer from the University of Tennessee, Maglia. Sims over the middle. McGowan runs out of bounds. 102 on the clock. 36 yard line and four yards on the play. Good job by McGowan to just get to that sideline. It's nothing more important after that catch. Stop that clock. Here you can take your time now. 102 left. Sims down inside the 10. Receiver couldn't get there. There's Malachi Carter. Blackwell back there defending for Duke. Nice job by Blackwell. They're up top. Blackwell, a graduate student, one of 19 graduates here, and just rolling them off, using that sideline as your friend. Good position. Third down. Let's see if they bring they bring some bodies. They've had some success here in this second half. When they bring a few, they've got them walked up. Three Five of 12 games. on third down, James. Out of a cluttered pocket, down towards the goal line, diving for the play. Flag comes out, and a touchdown, Georgia Tech. Adonica Sanders. There is a flag on the play. That's in the Defense number 39. The penalty will be declined. The result will play as a touchdown. 36 yards. Sims to Sanders for Georgia Tech. Tom, they're going to bring five. And they do a great job of picking it up, even though the pressure's there in the face of Sims. He's got pressure while he's holding right off the bat a couple times. They could have thrown that flag three different times. 
But the damage is done, and Sanders keeps playing that banjo here in the second half. That's some, that's some pretty string music for Georgia Tech right now. And back-to-back, -back, beautifully thrown long balls by Jeff Sims. That time with the pressure in his face, knew the blitz was coming, and knew he'd have one-on-one -on -one with the big guy, Adonica Sanders. And with the defender draped all over him, they'll take another look at this one, obviously. A big play. Here's the deal. I think the ball jarred a little bit, but I don't think it ever hits the grass. It's, you know, had that ball hit the grass and moved like that, then I think that you have to call it an incomplete pass. But watch, Tom, it's his forearm is underneath the ball as he hits the ground. This is going to be our best look. The left forearm bracing the football. Ball, it's a, it's a yep. touchdown. And then he gathered it, gathers it in the abdomen and hangs on to it. Now it is under review. It's it's a touchdown. Uh, Donicus, you're right. It's I, I don't see how in the world they could turn this over. That ball doesn't hit the ground. It does jar loose, but it doesn't hit the ground. James Sanders had not been involved all day long. And he has two enormous catches on this drive. And those, his only two catches of the afternoon. If it stands, two catches, 73 yards, and this one, 36 yards for the touchdown. You must have indisputable video evidence to overturn the call, which on the field was touchdown Sanders. And it would be the third TD pass of the game for Sims. He came into the afternoon with three, D pa three TD passes for the season. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. It is a touchdown, Georgia Tech and Sanders. Second TD grab of the year for Adonicus Sanders. Tom, how about the fight and concentration? We showed you the ISO shot of that entire play. Three times he was interfered with grab. He ran through it, and even with the defender draped all over him, focuses on that football and able to pull it in and keep it off of that turf. And how about the throw by Jeff Sims? Extra point is good. Thirty-six yards, Sims to Sanders. Where you see the pressure, and it's definitely getting to Sims. He's got to throw it, falling backwards, and still putting the touch on it. For Adonica Sanders, the junior from North Charleston, South Carolina. Remember, Sims had that arm injury in the first game of the year against Northern Illinois, missed most of the first three games of the season. Entered the first half late against North Carolina a couple of weeks ago and had three rushing touchdowns, including a 50-yard run. Well, today he's thrown three TD passes and the last one to Sanders to take the lead for Georgia Tech, 51 seconds to go. Popped up playing that air guitar. I don't think Slash from Guns N' Roses could do that. He couldn't make that catch. There's no way. And Slash is very talented. Sweet music for Sims and Sanders, and Georgia Tech has taken the lead. And the third TD pass in the game ties a career high for Sims. Still some time on the clock, 31-27. Georgia Tech has retaken the lead, led at halftime, 17-14. We were tied 17-all, 24-all. And now Georgia Tech trying to hang on. Holmberg and the Duke Blue Devils back onto the field, 51 seconds to go. And James, remember, you made this point. On the last drive for Duke, it appeared that they were just going to keep grinding and run out the clock and win this game. The buses were warmed up. Not so fast. Well, but therein lies the rub. What they do best is grind it out. They're not going to have that luxury right now. Mateo Durant, it can't be his show up the middle every time. Wow. Great catch, but they got to use a timeout maybe here. Marwidi on the grab. It was behind him, adjusting for six yards. Two timeouts for Duke. Clock is rolling, 37 seconds, continues to roll. They go Marwini again, he gets popped at the 32-yard line by Miles Sims. That's two yards and a timeout on the play, 31 seconds to go. See, they've got Jalen Calhoun, they've got, th 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 that is a true deep threat. It's been a pretty big day for 
Miles Sims, transfer from Michigan. Attending to Jake Marwidi, the Duke tight end and the senior. Keep in mind that Georgia Tech has not won here in Durham since 2013. They've lost the last three trips to Wallace Wade Stadium, 2015, 2017, and a couple of years ago. Duke winning 41-23 in the last meeting here in Durham between the programs. Georgia Tech, by the way, trying to win its third game of the year. Last two years, they've gone three and seven and three and nine in the first two years under Jeff Collins. Thirty-one seconds on the clock. Holmberg steps forward and throws midfield. Caught Calhoun and down to the 42. 24 seconds on the clock, got to set the chains, 26 yards on that pass play. And look at him, already over the ball, benefit of practicing that tempo every day in practice. Holmberg back to pass over the middle, it's intercepted! Intercepted, Wanye Thomas! 15 seconds left and Thomas comes up with the interception for Georgia Tech! A little bit too high for the intended target. And you know, forcing that high throw is the defender underneath. Excellent job by Jalen King to be right there in position to force that high throw and taking advantage of it. A guy who's spent some time over on the sidelines after being hurt today, just figuring out a way to go play hurt. And a lot of banged up Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets here on this football team that are looking to move to win number three on the season and match their win total of the last two years and get a bye week next week. Perfect timing for that so they can rest up and try to go healthy into the back half of this season and win some more football games for Coach Jeff Collins. Blue Devils will not use that final timeout. Coaches meet 31-27. What a win for Georgia Tech. And the interception to seal it by Wanye Thomas. His first of the season. Jeff Sims throws three TD passes to match a career record. And that includes the go-ahead TD pass in the closing minutes. 36 yards to Adonicus Sanders. Just his second catch of the game, but that one went all the way to the end zone. Let's go back late in the first half, Tom. P.J. Harris, ball was intercepted right in front of him. And he, t and he tripped up the, the defensive back with the interception. Let's get it down to Abby Labar, who's with a happy Jeff Collins right now, that's for sure.